everybody. We're really excited to announce that on Friday, August 19, we are going to be doing our first ever live show at the New York City Pinball Championships. Now, some of you may remember our emergency episode back in the day where we talked about Deep Root Pinball and the absolute torrent of scandals that came along with some of the worst pinball machines ever made. And if you don't know about it, go listen to the episode. But we're going to follow up on that story because, hey, history keeps happening in the world of pinball. So head on over to nycpinballchamps.com to get more information about that. And if you would like to get a discount, check out our Patreon. Uh, Well, I do mini series on the Mm -hmm. on the Street Fight Patreon and uh, the series. I do a show with Tom Sexton from the Trillbillies. Right. And it's called um, Holy Boys with a Z. We talk about. You know, just Christian stuff. Basically, Tom grew up uh, tithing to Kenneth Copeland when he right. was a kid. Whoa. He yeah. tithed to Kenneth Coral Copeland. Roberts's fucking private jet pilot. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And he <laughs> loves, we we love Oral Roberts over our holy boys. We love him and Jesse Duplantis. We, uh, oh, yeah. Can't get it. We're so Duplantis pilled. You'll never <laughs> believe it. I don't know if you guys ever heard of Pastor Ed Young, but mm-hmm. he is. He is a guy who he's like a sex pastor, which yeah, those like those like, are, like hold on, uh, like Mark Driscoll used to be. Yeah, but he's still sex kind pastor of is, too. but you know, yeah. What is yes. a sex pastor for someone who grew up in the Catholic Church? That was just kind <laughs> of all of them. <laughs> he's a guy who will go up and be like, "Wives need to throat their husbands." Mm. That's right. It's mm. in the Bible. I right. just said it. Throat right. your husband. He said he he his general <laughs> thing is like you should. Every every few months, you and your wife should have sex seven days in a row, no matter how you feel. And uh, it will make you feel really good to do that, which I tend to agree that having sex feels good. But he's, <laughs> <laughs> it's not something I'm going to argue Uncontroversial. against. Yeah. Yeah. Blisteringly hot take. Yeah. <laughs> um, but he... He also is like 61. I think we looked it up. He was 61 years old. And uh, he raps sometimes. No. And he raps. Uh, yeah, oh he sometimes he'll just rap. He also has a rap video where he, but he's like 60 years old. So he oh. looks insane dressed <laughs> like a rapper. So many possible worlds, but we got this one. So many possible worlds, but we got this one. Welcome to the worst of all possible worlds, the first and only podcast compelled by God to rap bars about throating your husband. I'm the worst of all possible Joshes. I'm the worst of all possible AJs. And I'm the worst of all possible Brian's. And joining us today, we have the one, the only Brian Quinby of Street Fight Radio. Super happy to have you on the show today, Brian. Hey, I'm here. I think I approached you about, you know, maybe coming on the show to talk about some of this Christian stuff, but also some of the weirder, like, reactionary elements of pop culture. And something that you were saying that you'd been pretty hung up on lately was Prager U Kids. This is the child phone. Focused entertainment channel of PragerU, the fake quote unquote university uh, founded by noted pervert Dennis Prager. Yeah. For Street Fight, I guess you could call it a leftist podcast. It, it kind of started out that way, but it's kind of morphed into this thing where it's just like, we, you know, we talk a lot about jobs, but we mm-hmm. also talk a lot about like, weird dudes and like a lot of <laughs> a lot of like the right wing stuff that maybe bubbles under pop culture and somehow i was searching through youtube for something i don't even remember but i ended up on the prager you kids channel mm-hmm. and started watching them and uh they were fucking crazy so yeah. i was like uh i was like oh so i brought it to the show and and we goofed on it a little bit and now every once in a while i just go back and check to see if there's another crazy thing this and dave ramsey oh are yeah <laughs> the two yeah. most powerful fucking things for street fight like they yeah. are this dave ramsey and micro if if they've kicked <laughs> up any dust over the past week it definitely gets brought up on on street fight because we dislike them intensely <laughs> well and pray Prager U was started by Dennis Prager essentially as like this, this thing to reach teenagers. This gets people, teachers will show this in their classrooms all the time, oh, yeah. like I regular like yeah, Prager that, U that videos tracks. about like 
whatever the 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 thing is that their taxation is theft or whatever. And it does have, have some- like a '90s like infomercial vibe to it. It's got yeah. like a Saved by the Bell transition energy, just like a whole bunch of like weird like colors and shapes and weird yeah. cutaways. It's like it's 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 built for the attention span, I think, of like fifth graders for sure. And I think that the whole, I mean, we'll talk a bit more about PragerU's whole raison d'être, which is you know, to propagandize and to brainwash kids into being more conservative. But and to introduce them to such luminaries of the right wing movement as Michael Knowles. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And uh, we'll get there. But I think that what I found interesting about this, too, was the way that when I was watching some of this Prager U stuff, it parallels a frequent topic of conversation that we have here on our show, which, of course, is Adventures in Odyssey, the focus on the family children's radio drama that largely exists to implant certain uh, family values into the brains of children, right? Like there's a lot of parallels here. And so I figured what would make sense for us today would be to put together a program where we uh, both talk about some PragerU stuff as well as some Adventures in Odyssey stuff and then just sort of compare these things side by side and see where we've come over the last 30 years because the stuff we're going to be looking at in Adventures in Odyssey land This is stuff from the late late 80s and early 90s, whereas this PragerU stuff is from like this year and last year. Yeah. Oh, and it's a match made in hell. These two (laughs) Uh, murder, Brian. uh, Had you heard about Adventures in Odyssey before in your quest for all things uh, uh, holy? So it's funny. Last week, the episode we did was about focus on the family. uh, Mm. Dobson, right? right? Yeah. So yeah, like yeah. I heard about it exactly last week <laughs> when when I was sort of doing research, but I that's like not really in our wheelhouse. Sure, uh, sure. Uh, mine and Tom's wheelhouse. We we kind of like the sleazier, scuzzier side of Christianity. Yeah. And uh yeah. we decided when we were doing Dobson, a lot of it was like two dudes talking about what women want in a yes. marriage and stuff yeah. like that, like mm-hmm, goofing mm-hmm. around about that kind of thing. Yeah. And, you know, it's always also about like trying to find the money on Holy Boys. Because, For sure. yeah. like I said, we really, 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 I mean, the show actually started out as just being basically the prosperity gospel. We've kind of moved mm-hmm. to a little more varied stuff, but it's still like, the prosperity gospel is what we like. So yeah, Dobson was like one of the nastiest guys I've ever covered yeah. on anything. Yeah. Like he's, he's like a guy that's truly like filthy. hateful, really yeah. fucked up well, guy. He just hates people. He's yeah. like a very angry man that hates people a lot. And it's like, a, if, if it's like when you hear, I've talked about this in the past, like my, with my father, uh, he is a massive asshole. Yeah. My dad. Oh, but he. Sorry. <laughs> well, you're talking about Dobson. I'm so Thanks sorry. Thanks for taking my side. A I'm lot so of people sorry. don't take my side in that one. <laughs> but, I'm so uh, sorry. My dad is a huge asshole, okay. but he is a huge asshole that says very nice things, says mm. things in a very kind way, mm. right? Mm. Like, so it's like you go to the grocery store and he's talking to the cashier and stuff like that. But like sometimes the mask just slips. He's like an intensely angry man. Like, you know, not abusive. Just you can tell there's a lot in there yeah. that uh, it just is angry. And that's the vibe I got from Dobson was like, I, I'm a Christian. I have to act like... I'm not angry. I can't. Sorry for the wrestling terminology. I can't cut a fiery <laughs> promo. Right. And uh, I have to be even keeled and measured or people will think I'm an angry, bad guy because the things I'm saying are really nasty. I, yeah. I think, you know, these guys also know that we all think the things they say are really nasty. That's why, mm-hmm. like, when you call a conservative racist, they flip out. Yeah. They go and they go nuts when right. you call them racist. It's like the one thing you can call them that will drive them insane. And uh, he's kind of that kind of nasty. Like it's just kind of held in. And he says it in a very calm, measured uh-huh. way. He says it's for families, but he is really like one of the most anti-gay people I've ever covered. And, and you know, right. I cover man cow. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Something that's so interesting to me about that is that it, I think it parallels this Prager you stuff really nicely. Right. Where mm-hmm. so much. Much of it is about putting on the smiling face. Yeah, looking as plain as possible. Basic, charming, approachable, it, you know. It's definitely not Kenneth Copeland stepping out looking like he was born in right, hell itself. Right. Who has the best clothes? 
guy. He's, I yeah. I can tell you yeah. who has the best clothes of all the preachers is Benny Hinn. That oh, guy yeah. is fucking yeah. like nobody's <laughs> ever looked as good as Benny Hinn. And you know, I'm a Creflo dollar head. Oh, <laughs> did, who isn't? Does he open all of his sermons with the Benny Hill song playing in the background as he just kind of runs yeah. around? <laughs> He I always not. thought his name was Benny Hill spelled wrong. Like when I was young. <laughs> and then I found out who he is and he's like a really unhinged guy. Uh, but he, he dresses insane and custom and these custom crazy looking suits that he wears. And I, I just, oh. uh, Kenneth Copeland is dressed really well too, but he's dying. Yeah, like, you oh, just yeah. can't get away yeah. from the fact that he is a skeleton that He's is still somehow standing up. He's dead yeah. walking. It's unreal. Well, well I'm hearing a lot of like uh, like emotions and anger <laughs> directed towards <laughs> these men. Yeah. Um, but, I, you know, I feel like we should try and think a little more objectively. I think and, you're right, AJ. I, I wish there mm. were like a video that would mm. like tell mm. me how to do that. Perhaps yeah. uh, with a bar oh, across yeah. the bottom that says that. <laughs> Prager Hughes getting censored on YouTube. <laughs> Experiencing severe censorship. Not just any censorship, but severe, severe. censorship, which is my favorite kind of censorship. Yeah. Well, let's jump right into the first video in our set. This is a uh, how to think objectively. And Brian, you put this, uh, Murder Brian, you put this one on the playlist. And tell me a bit more about this particular video, why you selected it, what jumped out at it at you. It's just like the projection on it, I think, is mm. like what really hits me. Like a lot of the stuff that they're saying you have to do to think objective. Like, I'll, I'll just say it. They're describing in most of this, they're describing intersectionality is exactly yeah. what yeah. they're mm. describing. But they hate intersectionality. <laughs> yes. So yes. much. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a very weird the, thing. The four points here, just to run through these real quick, yeah. and then we'll sort of talk about how they're presented. But, mm. you know, on the substance, if you just read these four points and you don't have any of the other stuff that is in these videos that makes them so crazy, they're really pretty unobjectionable. Uh, use critical thinking. Mm -hmm. oh, Do your bro. own research. Critical thinking. I wonder if I there's know. some theory about that. <laughs> 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 to do with race, perhaps. Um, so that's number one. Number two is do your own research. Mm -hmm. uh, number three is be open to changing your mind. And mm -hmm. number four is be aware of emotional thinking. These are all, I think, pretty good. Like yeah. this is you, you want to talk about like a basic like liberal arts education and the sort of uh, philosophy of how to discover things that it teaches you. This is pretty much it. And so the examples that they give are examples of how to tell people that climate change isn't real. Right. Yep. <laughs> the best way to challenge assumptions is to ask tough questions. Humans are the real problem causing climate change. So why in the past did the climate change so drastically before people started industrializing? This you can tell this is like a post sort of COVID thing mm -hmm. video because do your own research is yeah. post 2020 yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. they, they just started do your own research. It's very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing my own research. The dumbest humans in the world doing their own research. Yeah, absolutely. My favorite thing. I just picture like the, the jock bro in it just like staring at a book going Rah! like just like screaming at it. They're researching <laughs> harder than they've ever researched before. Right. There's a lot of soy fans facing going on in this video there really which I guess is. is like what you do when you make videos for kids is you just do some extra soy face is and soy face the it. thing that wins the kids over these days I, is that I think no, no, so. no 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 I the think, thing that yeah. wins the kids over is a man in a top hat and a fake mustache mm. that is that is prime kid material as long as there's some like spider-man farting in there you're gonna get like 12 million views mm. right overnight uh, I, there's a lot of use in this video of like their comedy becomes like very clear of what they think comedy is mm -hmm. and it's mostly throwing on wigs and and that's kind of the beginning and end of most jokes there is a joke in here that was so deeply unfunny that it circled back around for me and uh <laughs> made me scream laugh would uh, you like to give that delivery real quick aj uh, it's like you know uh well wait if you can't trust uh, should you like not trust anyone and it cuts to what appears to be like a first year improv student at the pit throwing on a blanket over her head and screaming in a cockney accent I can't trust anyone they're all out to get me <laughs> and then there's like four seconds of just pure silence yeah and then she just screams into the camera it defeated you it defeated me <laughs> entirely it, 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 all the synapses in my brain shattered all at once and I was like I what is the joke here like that 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 cockney street urchins don't get climate change like I don't I think it's that women are stupid I see 
I that think that's a... the joke is that women tend to become libs and right. they're really, really stupid. It's the yeah. libs going on about climate change, even though the video is about like self critique. Right. And not just holding on to the beliefs that you're holding. It's just like instead just say, why are investors buying real estate? On well, that was amazing. <laughs> that was an front front. Yeah. <laughs> so my favorite line of all the videos, I think, is one of them. Yeah. Because they fucking will still make money. It doesn't matter. If Bitcoin is going to go down, why are so <laughs> many people still buying it that's what i'm asking on the one hand it's like look you got to express yourself freely and openly you got to do your own research and you need to be rational and objective but on the flip side it's so clearly telling you exactly what to think and to me this feels like something that is more of a hallmark of this sort of more recent vintage of propaganda i had people tell me in the past that considered themselves like libertarians and stuff that uh uh I, liberals think emotionally like the be beware of mm -hmm. emotional thinking right at least in the 90s uh, or early 2000s i had heard it as early as then and it was just like well if you you know obviously we all hate it when bad stuff happens but uh we gotta think like <laughs> like like when people defend uh hiroshima and nagasaki right sure. like bombing them <clears throat> right, right right and do uh, they're like you know it fucking sucks that we had to do it, but, yeah, it's but just what else were we going to do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Well, it's like, yeah. So the liberals are going to criticize something and say, well, you're just a racist. Whereas a conservative would never do anything like that ever. No, mm -hmm. not no. us. I mean, there is a, 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 again, something more artful would take a conservative person getting too emotional about something, but even mm. though it doesn't happen, I know it never happens, especially online. No, it never um, happens. And then correcting that they can't do that. They can't even show one of their own being wrong about the right thing. They mm. just have to be like, just don't be like the libs. Emotions are the greatest obstacle to objective thinking because they cloud our minds from seeing the truth clearly. One of the most common is what people refer to as thinking like a victim. In other words, blaming other people or things for your problems. My life is terrible because everybody's out to get me. We all know someone in our lives like this. J just don't be a lib. At the end of the day, that's all that matters. Don't yell in an insanely annoying voice, please. <laughs> the guy that does the be open to changing your mind part, Yeah, I, his oh, voice was so it's bad. So it's more about how you think than what you think. Your whole life will be filled with people telling you what to think. And your own biases and feelings will tell you all this other stuff that you need to think. I have a 17 year old daughter. When she was growing up, when she was like a kid kid, she didn't really watch cartoons. Mm. She, uh, she liked, she called them shows with real people. And so, <laughs> she, so she liked like Hannah Montana mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah. Wizards of Waverly Place, all that stuff. Right. And the crossover and, uh, where they all went on the cruise ship. With uh, oh, Zach yeah, and Cody. The Sweet Life with Zach and Cody. It, it was like a whole long name. <laughs> Sweet Don't worry Life about it. on Deck with this. Hannah Montana. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Don't worry. I know everything there is to know about cruise ships. That's AJ all. AJ Diddy Zuma arc. Um, yeah. <laughs> I would listen to it as it was playing in the other room, and I was looking at my phone like a yeah. horrible dad. And um, <laughs> I would just be like, why, why do you watch this? Everybody on this show is fucking screaming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. everything about it's all just screaming. And I listen to fucking heavy metal. Yeah. But like there is this kit, this idea that children must be screamed at yes. in order mm -hmm. to get them to pay attention. Yes. But the yeah. guy that is screaming in this video. I mean, to have a lack of a better word sounds very soy to me. Yeah. He yeah. Sound yeah. He doesn't sound cool at all, which mm. maybe the right has has seeded ground and are just like, we're never going to get the cool kids. So we right. just got to go after the dorkiest. I mean, maybe, <laughs> but, but like also, <laughs> I, I think what it feels like to me is what happens when you try to create media that is targeted toward children when you don't respect kids intelligence. Right. Yeah. It's like yeah, yeah, you. Yeah you can only then approach it from a condescending perspective where it's like these fucking dumbass kids. Like they're not going, I'm not going to be able to hold their attention by saying anything like interesting or meaningful or trying to draw them into a meaningful narrative. So yeah, I just need to have fucking Ariana Grande screaming at the top of her register for 20 solid minutes. It's a lot of yelling in these videos. And I found, I found that it bugs me so much. Yeah. It's like yeah. fucking calm down a little bit. Kids can take like two minutes where yeah. somebody's not screaming in their face. So, 
That was like my major takeaway is this guy's voice is driving me crazy. Well, now I'm going <laughs> to have to re-record <laughs> all of my new The Worst of All Possible Kids videos. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think they're just trying to do what they see on Disney Channel yeah. is really what the and It's this ends up being just uh, people trying to make a Disney channel. It's like when Christian organizations try to do something hip. Right. It's like, okay, well, good shot. You, you gave it a shot. Not I think that's happen. that's partly why Focus on the Family is so successful with something like Adventures in Odyssey mm -hmm. because they decided to, that they just wanted to make an old timey radio show of a right. cozy little Thomas Kincaid town that won't let godless heathens like Garrison Keillor anywhere near it. <laughs> I mean, if anything, Odyssey it has the opposite effect, whereas this is just constantly screaming at you. So, like, even if you do start to doze off, like you you know you're jolted awake mere moments later by a man right. in an Einstein wig, but like. <laughs> Is Odyssey. that what that's supposed to be? <laughs> I think so. Uh, Odyssey, Odyssey just puts me, puts you right the fuck to sleep because it's just, it's yeah. so mellow for so mm -hmm. much of it. Um, how much do we think the actors were paid to do oh. these shorts? Because it's free. They did this for free. I would agree. I, I feel I like they're real stipend in a hearty <laughs> handshake. Yeah. Yeah, perhaps. Um, there's and, then, and then the other thing is they get the connection to like the fucking Koch Industries money. Yeah. So like they're oh, golden. Sure. sure. The idea that all of the kids children exist as something that belongs to the nuclear family in that yeah. by virtue <laughs> of owning them, these families should have absolute say in every single thing that the kid says, does, reads, experiences, etc. But do you know what else? Do you know who else should have a say in what a kid says and does? Dennis hmm. Prager. Well, him too, but their <laughs> boss when yes. they get a job. Yes. Because yeah. kids need to go get jobs. They do. They need to do it right now. Has anyone ever told you? Just go get a job. But how are you supposed to do that? If you don't start driving down the road, you'll never get to where you want to go. So here are four tips to get down the road with your first job. I would say that this video was the, the how to get a, apply for a job video was extremely confusing to me mm -hmm. the first time I saw it. And then again, the second time I saw it, because <laughs> why do kids need this information? Like, yeah. Who yeah, is, is this, this for? This is, is not, this for? Yeah. This is not how to apply for a job as a kid. Right. This is, this <laughs> yeah. is like how to meet your potential as a 23 year old. It really, like, like it's, yeah. Like, <laughs> folks, the only way to actually prepare for a job is you have to go up to a random person's <clears throat> door, knock on it and say, hi, I'm AJ. I'm 32 years old. What <laughs> career do you work in? Do you mind if you take five to 10 minutes to tell me about it? Invite me into your home. Go door to door. Go around door to door. With a clipboard. Yes. Yeah. It's flawless. It's a flawless <laughs> place. Once you figure out what you want to do, Go for it, but don't go it alone. Find people who already know what they're doing and are willing to help. Are you an older, more mature people? Yes. Good. I'll tell you what. I'm. I'm gonna t I'll tell you this about uh, my partner Brett. Brought this up, mm -hmm. and mm. and when we watched this video, he said this video is not for kids. It's for grandparents of kids to watch yeah. and then say, yeah. "Oh my, the yeah. kids are." The kids are doing so good. This is good for kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly <laughs> what it that's is. That's the weird thing about like Prager U is like, even though, yeah, it's like the main stuff is aimed maybe at teenagers. The kids stuff is aimed theoretically at like eight year olds. Most of the people consuming this are elderly people on Facebook, right? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Sure. Yeah. It, sure. <laughs> It's it's all people who like have as their job listing retired. Yes. <laughs> I've said this a million times on 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 several different occasions. You cannot control what your kids are going to like. Mm -hmm. It is mm -hmm. an impossible task. A right. And everybody that's had kids will try, you know? Mm -hmm. But they buy them like a minor threat onesie and they're like this kid, <laughs> this kid's coming up brought up with minor thread around them and then they're going to be really cool like I wish I was when I was a kid, you mm -hmm, know? Mm -hmm. And then they don't like minor thread or guitars <laughs> or music or Wait, anything. Brian, you have no control over it. I literally just bought my niece a New York Mets onesie with matching <laughs> booties and bib. Are you telling me that she's not going to end up being a Mets fan? <laughs> it does not work. God it damn never, it. Josh, I got some real bad news works. for you. <laughs> none of it works and that's what is like this stuff doesn't work and 
I think it is really grandparents. Maybe they are playing it for the kids, you know? Yeah. But I don't yeah. even think that's happening. I really think these people are watching these to give them a good feeling of some of the stuff that kids are potentially learning. And also because they learn on this level, Yeah, you know, where mm-hmm. it's just like, Oh, okay. You know, because there is no practical reason for anybody under 14 right. to know how to get a job at all. Yeah. Period. Yeah. 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 I, to the point of, this is probably not actually for kids. I just want to go through again the four yeah. main points that I guess teach you how to prepare for a job according yeah, to this yeah, video. Absolutely. To um, number one is to find what you're good at. Um, mm-hmm. You need to find something people will actually pay you for. So, uh, sorry, you're not going to be able to make money playing video games or scrolling through Instagram. And I'm like, who is this for? Get a good sense of what skills people value enough to pay you for. Here's a hint. It's probably not video games or scrolling through Instagram. Uh, it's particularly <laughs> dragging us, Josh, I believe. <laughs> that, that is how we make our money, so I feel uh, like... We make money podcasting, actually, uh, yeah, and, and we we review the video games. content. That's right, Thank Brian. You. It's a content house. house. I, see. <laughs> I, I, do, I do love that, that it goes out of its way to be like, hey, do you think you're a good singer? Fuck you. No, yeah. you're not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's micro, baby. That is micro. <laughs> if ever there was a micro influence. That the literal it. opera singer. <laughs> yeah, don't follow your dreams. Okay. Uh, um, Lord. So that's that. Yeah, that's exactly. Don't follow your dreams. Uh, find something extremely practical and go for that instead. Um, point number two: find mentors. Uh, you need to track down the people who are very good at what they do and Again, then learn door from them. To door, go door knock to door. on the door, yeah. say, what do you do? Invite me into your home. Let me ask you some questions. So, th- and actually after I'll watching- I'll just walk down to the cellar myself. Here, here's a yeah. wrench. Do whatever you want to. Go nuts. Generously, being mm-hmm. very generous, mm-hmm. this video could be geared toward 12-year-olds, I think. Yeah. But mm-hmm. even, even in that, who's going to mentor a 12-year-old? Right. To do a job that isn't like a dream job, well, right? right. Like, yeah, exactly. So, so, so you're like looking to guitar. join a guild in your small <laughs> village upon the Avon River. Well, go to Mr. Yeah. Shakespeare's at the Gloving. I will never forget <laughs> when I started up my first paper route because I'm old enough to have actually fucking done that. I was the last generation of the paper route kids. Oh, wow. Um, and I will never forget uh, that I was like, you know, I got to be the best paper boy imaginable. I need to find a mentor. Uh, and I went to the Grand Rapids Press and I went through every desk. This did not happen, by the way. I'm telling a, <laughs> a, telling a tall tale here. Son um, of a bitch. But I, I, I went up to the editor-in-chief and I said, how do I be the best mentor ever? And he looked at me and he said, get the fuck out of here, kid. You <laughs> piece of shit. See, fuck that's you. that's where the real... Uh, grind set is you don't look for a mentor you become a mentor that's you right make Brian at your job in the first place you become one of those influencers who goes on TikTok and is like what's the five things you need to know about being successful in investments and you like sell your course for ten thousand dollars worth yeah. of bitcoin or whatever yeah I just am I the only one that's really creeped out by the fact that they're trying to like make kids into money machines like yeah. from the word go like it feels really gross to me honestly well, so we're not following our dreams that is out of the question right yeah, yeah. They, never they're be good done enough, with right? that now we got to look at what happens to people who who work for a living who haven't followed followed their dreams and you know they're probably working in an office somewhere Maybe they're doing construction or or doing like blue collar work. Yep. Uh, that's generally what I did. Maybe working in a call center. Yep. And right. like you're just like, what possibly could a mentor <laughs> that works on a construction <laughs> site say to a 12 year old? Right. <laughs> <laughs> what is what is happening here, Timmy? <laughs> you want to take a go at the bulldozer here? We'll just uh, leave you unsupervised. Good luck. There could be kids who have a passion for something maybe intellectual or something artistic or whatever, and they can find somebody who is able to teach them more about what that works like. But that's not the argument that's being made here, right? Mm, Just like you were saying, Brian, this is, you've got to get yourself into the fucking workforce and you've got to maximize your labor value. Mm. And that means that you have to pick the most lucrative career possible and you have to min max your stats so that you can go as far as possible (laughs) along that track. There's an assumption of a level playing field Mm. across the board here. And it's your habits that suck. You have to get better habits. You have to right. go to your mentor and be like, right. hey, you know, what are you doing every day? What are you doing to, like, grind best every single day? Where, uh, you know, that's just not how the fucking world works. Well, the like, thing is, AJ, mm. all ground is level at the foot of the cross. 
<laughs> it was on a hill. <laughs> it was literally, literally read today. on a fucking hill <laughs> from the Focus on the Family website. Oh anyway, my goodness. Uh, so th- this is a, a good enough segue as any yeah. to get into Good Business, the Adventures in Odyssey episode where Robin Jacobs, who is... At this point in the series, she has been established as a bad worker. There's an episode where she struggles with Bible study, and then there's another where she struggles with a a group assignment in school. By the way, something that I wanted to point out here, which is funny to me, the only reason that the voice actor for Robin has her job in the first place (laughs) is that her dad works on the show. So I thought that was fun. Yeah, Her, Her dad is Chuck Bolte. She is uh, Sage Bolty. Was Robin and also the one who had the little brother who was waiting for the apocalypse for the rapture? Little sister. Little sister. Great. Yep. So uh, Robin wants to get a dress. They start the episode with her being bored. They didn't need to because they already gave her another useless little intro, which is that she wants a, a nice dress that she saw at the mall. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And her dad comes in. This is actually, I think, the first episode that features Adventures in Odyssey's intrepid newspaper editor, Dale Jacobs. Oh, wow. And he, he, he says, why don't you get a job? You know, kids all over the neighborhood have been doing odds and ends in their spare time to make money. <laughs> When I was your age, I had a paper route. Weird clarification. A paper route? You mean work? <laughs> like, get a job? Oh, I uh. know it sounds crazy, but people all over the country actually work to get paid. Really. I didn't make it up. Like, this girl's eight, maybe nine years old. Young um, people, <laughs> I mean, young people are always... I think it's funny, too, because I've said this before on Street Fight, that, like, I did as a kid... Did not dream very big. Mm-hmm. It's very mm. obvious with how I ended up. Um, <laughs> the podcaster's a, call is a noble profession, Brian. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. You take the cloth and then you go out and preach the word. <laughs> <laughs> but I had I had really sort of settled on, hey, I'll just get a job and a nice little apartment. Mm-hmm. And it'll be nice. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, I talked about how, like, I had these, like, sort of feelings in my head of, like, ah, you know, I work at a record store or, or like, a uh, mm-hmm. CD store before I knew what anything paid or a jewelry store. Something because I had already worked at McDonald's and mm-hmm. a few food, Chuck E. Cheese. Sure. And I gotten disgusting. And, 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 like, I didn't like the, like, grease. Oh, yeah. And stuff yeah, like yeah. that. So I had like, I was really kind of just dreaming about working in a store that didn't <laughs> like, have have grease on it. Yeah. But that's also like not enough for these people. Right. Yeah. Like you have to own because you can't make enough to live. Yeah. Working at a store. I never had that thing in my mind. Like, ooh, work. It sucks. Like I got a job as soon as I fucking could because I yeah. wanted money. And this is them taught. This is them showing what they think like kids are up to. Uh, no, this sucks, yeah, and that, <laughs> that, that really mirrors. I think the other video, uh, the, the Prager you video nicely, right? Where it's like, Hey kids, you're not going to, you know, make money just by sitting on your ass and watching Instagram all day. You got to get a job. And yeah. I don't think it necessarily tracks with how kids think. Uh, what did you make of the assertion in the Prager U video that uh, flipping burgers is a simple job? Like I have said that, like those people deserve the world. Yeah, the, the, yeah. The, yeah. especially yeah. the McDonald's people. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that I lasted seven years as a cable guy, three years in a call center. Like it's not like I've been a podcaster yeah. for ten years. Yeah. So yeah. I lasted a long time on a lot of fucking jobs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I lasted three months. At McDonald's. Wow. Yes. Wow. And one year at Chuck E. Cheese. And, and like, I washed out of McDonald's so fast. It is the hardest job I've ever had. It's the, it, it truly is. I still have like stress dreams yeah. about working at McDonald's. Wow. Like it was tough. It's, it's like a really, I hate when they say, if I, if I got a job at McDonald's, I'd become the best burger flipper in the world. And you're like, you would be so beat down. Yes. After yeah. 10 minutes working at McDonald's. Yeah, believe a lunch me, that's rush, what yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I worked for a number of months uh, in retail uh, selling shoes at the Models in Times Square. This is a sporting goods store. That was, I would say, probably the toughest job I ever had. Oh, wow. Because it was so many different things. You would get the fucking international tourists coming in. They were always very demanding. Generally speaking, the French were the worst, closely followed by the Brazilians. Um, hmm. But... 
no matter what, you were constantly under pressure and the demand was always there for you to be putting forth like this great fucking customer service. It's like I, I'm at fucking models. I'm getting paid $15 an hour. And do you expect me to like be the best, most majestic like worker? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. then I remember one day going over to the McDonald's in Times Square because I needed to get mm-hmm. lunch and all I could fucking afford was McDonald's. Right. And um, I felt like after seeing that, I was like, I have such an easy job. These fucking guys, like, in, yeah. in, in the, sh- the sh- especially Times Square. I mean, like, just the, the volumes that, like you, like you know, like the volumes that people handle at any of those Times Square businesses are crazy. Yes. I will say Inhuman. that in, working working at like Bryant Park, which is a little off of Times Square, mm. even there, it's like it was a. It was a fucking madhouse during lunch rush. Uh, I worked at a place called La Pen Quotidienne or, oh, the, sure. pa- or the Pain Quotient, if you're just reading it <laughs> out loud. And um, it was an absolute nightmare. And people, I think, especially in, in in the jobs that the society considers to be like easier, you know, when which are, in fact, like the hardest jobs in the world. There is such a higher demand uh, placed on you by right uh, by the customers because like well your job's so easy why don't you just do it easily for me I, I remember the uh, the old like Carlos Mencia type joke to go after oh with, I love like, his mind workers. dude his mind yeah. is wild yeah. he really <laughs> had so a much mind of a TV Mencia. show about it <laughs> <laughs> was uh, yeah, the the joke was always like. Oh, yeah, they're such fucking idiots because the cash register has pictures of the food on it. So when you order the food, they just hit the picture. And like last week, one of those weird reactionary guys, because they're all talking about McDonald's right now, was like, it took me 20 minutes to order food for four (laughs) people on the fucking touch screen. And it's like, yeah, "Yeah, bitch, it's not the easiest thing now, is it? (laughs) Yeah, they, they, I mean, (laughs) put yourself in like, it's hard for people to, to like think of this as adults who have, have worked like, you know, most adults have worked some pretty hard jobs, but yeah. I always try to think of it as like, I'm a 16 year old. Mm-hmm. I'm, mm-hmm. I've taken on this, this I'm working at McDonald's, which is essential. This is an adult's job. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. adults are coming in and screaming at me all day. Yes. Like that is the job. Your real job as a cashier at McDonald's is not doing cashier stuff. It's yeah. getting screamed. Yeah, at. no, it's like yeah. anger management counselor. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then there's one person above you who their job is to get screamed at extra hard. Yep. And then the people above them never have to look at a com- customer yep. their, their whole life. Like the worst people in the world are customers. Like yeah. people don't. And, and, mm-hmm. and that's how I can always tell that these people have never worked in customer service ever, yes, because that's right. the only thing I've ever been qualified to do in my whole life. And I did only customer service mm-hmm. as my career. Right. I had one job painting car doors where I didn't have to talk to customers, but every other job, you know, the cable company, Mm -hmm. I was like going to people's houses and fixing their cable, the call center. I was answering the phone and shit like that. And the goal at every fucking one of those jobs is you work really hard to get away from the customer. Yes. Like yeah. that is the goal at every one of these jobs. Yep. And like people don't even think they they don't know that. They don't know that like no, I'm like trying to get away from me. <laughs> I'm trying to be like three people up on the chain so I never have to look at you. Yeah, no, I know. That's like it's like the old thing of all, well, I'm not going to bring my business around here anymore. It's like fucking good, go away. I don't want you in my yeah. face. And to, I don't make money that way. Exactly. <laughs> and you know what? Robin Robin faces a little bit she of does. that. She uh, does. When she starts getting notes on her work on a paper route. Yeah. Wait, she, so so Josh you actually yeah. did have a paper route, I right? Did. Like that that part was not a lie. No, even no, you that, lied about everything else. No, that part was um, the, the rest of the story was a joke, yeah. but I did actually run a paper route for I want to say like maybe 5 6 years. Um See, that quite definitely some time. did not exist in my town. Like mm. it was always adults who delivered the papers. It right. was people well, who drove a truck yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. and like and tossed s- it out and like we went to church with them and like they were family friends or whatever, but like So this is an interesting never saw a kid do it. A uh, change that was underway at the point that I started my route. Mm. So, you know, I started my route when I was maybe like, I don't know, maybe 11, 12, something like that. At that time, it was still small enough that I could very easily walk the route if I wanted to. Or sometimes I rollerbladed it. You were so cool. Yeah, of course. (laughs) I I still fucking cool. Yeah, I still am. Um, (laughs) Rollerblades are cool. I believe I believe the proper term is radical. (laughs) How do you feel about rollerblades, Brian? We got to get your opinion on this. They're cool. I, I yeah. rollerblade. Yeah, yeah. I mean, go. I'm more of a roller skates guy, but oh, I really? like rollerblades. Whoa. I'm into mm. them. Yeah, it's I like roller skating. It's fun. It's yeah. back now too. It's it's very it, roller skating Much is like on trend.
Broadway. Trend again. It's much like yeah. Broadway, yeah. R- roller skating, I could, I, I don't know, why are they more <laughs> difficult than roller blades? Like, I've always had trouble, like, staying upright and moving forward in roller skates, but roller blades have always been... God, everyone here know, is so like, much cooler than I am. I, <laughs> have you never rollerbladed? Uh, no, I was just really bad at it. I, I have weird okay. knees. My hips turn in mm. so that my knees are facing two different directions, so it puts a lot of pressure on my legs, so I can't do it for very long. Oh, I was okay. a Razor scooter kid. I was, oh, I, that's I, I really, even cooler yeah. yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and everyone would be like, you can do a trick with it, and like, you can't. There's nothing, that, there's that no, was like, a very, tricks I feel you can like do with it. that was a very San Diego thing, because whenever I'd visit my grandparents in San Diego, there were always kids on Razor scooters while I'd be rolling. I also remember that yeah. was like a that was that was so on trend for a little bit. I remember like fucking Razor scooters going for two hundred dollars in the Sharper Image catalog. Now oh, there's yeah, something yeah, that yeah. fucking dates me. I, I remember, remember the remember Sharper the TV Image commercials. They were like the '80s were about skateboards, <laughs> the '90s were rollerblades, yeah. and now that it's the new millennium, you're gonna get a Sharper Image inline <laughs> scooter. You could get them in red and blue. That's right. That's right, AJ. Um, Anyway, to take this back to the paper route, I did that route uh, for a while. And then Mm -hmm. what ended up happening was people started unsubscribing, much like in the game Paperboy. And uh, Mm -hmm. also much like in the video game Paperboy, there were zombies on my route. There were people rolling tires up and down the street, you know, things of that nature. But then (laughs) what is a real hellscape, (laughs) y'all? But then they doubled the size of my route, the the geographic size of it. They literally doubled it because so many people were unsubscribing. And I think at that point... But I'm sure they paid you more. I think I got a small bump, um, but (laughs) no, not not a significant one. cocaine to make sure you could do the route. (laughs) That's right. At double the size. So all that is to say, like, it's interesting to me how in this example they're using the paper route example because the paper route is sort of the classic you yeah. know first job uh and in this case robin is presumably able to do it uh, of her own volition but as we come to yeah. find she's not getting it out early enough because this is the morning paper yeah she's mm-hmm. going and delivering it at noon they at eleven thirty or noon you can't yeah. do yeah. that uh i w- did i do that sometimes yes absolutely but Amazing. you can't do that um and so she encounters a deeply unreal dog uh, that's yeah. like screaming at her but it sounds more I don't know if it was just like the compression that I got was weird but it didn't sound like a dog it sounded like a hell demon that no just, that was like, definitely just the of nature of the cue itself I think yeah. so, anyway so she's she's delivering to this lady the dog is attacking her and the lady's right. like well you suck at this <laughs> so why don't you mow my lawn instead yeah well like what would yeah. mow my lawn mow your lawn <laughs> but that's work I want to make lots of money without having to work hard for it. Me too. Well, it's not a very large lawn. <laughs> Great. Only about an hour's work. I do it, but I have allergies, and my husband's away on business. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's so much information $10. about your life, lady. Yeah. <laughs> she's just my she's husband's just got- away on business. Yeah. I have several How's pool boys who come in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's just very I lonely. I definitely have breast cancer. Um, <laughs> so she pays Robin a pretty good rate, right? It's an yeah, hour's 10 bucks. job. She 10 gets bucks 10 an hour. bucks in 1989 dollars. Yeah, right? it's Before, higher than our, our current minimum wage. Yeah, I'm I'm putting my Joe Biden I did that sticker on the Zoom call. Uh, nice. So. <laughs> so, so from here then, um, Robin's like, hey, I could make more money doing this lawn mowing yeah. and I find it to be less onerous than a paper out because I can set my own hours and you know she becomes a small business magnet right she posts signs around town suddenly finds that she's not able to actually get all the work done herself so she runs across a couple kids at school yep. and pays each of them five dollars a job despite yeah. the fact that each job actually ta- cost ten dollars we yeah. have this like 80s phone montage where mm. she's fielding all the work too where it's like <laughs> <laughs> the music is great Hi, here. This is Robin. It actually really you need your we're all dancing sure. let me get my calendar this sounds like Phoenix Hi, Wright Robin. music. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wondered why I felt soothed. Hello, Robin's Rotors. I... Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Brian. <laughs> I will say, I will say that she started this out as like a Lyft driver, basically. Yeah. 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 Where it's like, right. I can work as much as I want or as little as I right. want and just do the thing. And then she owns Lyft now. She she yeah. goes on to own Lyft, yeah. which isn't a realistic thing, but this isn't a realistic. No. But it is, it is funny that, you know, they were already kind of telegraphing in a weird way where all work was going yes. to get. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is exactly what they want to happen. Yeah, Robin yeah. Robin becomes an app 
basically. Yeah, so she she gets together with with Jack and Oscar, and of course Jack we know is the local sort of ne'er do well. He's right. always scheming, and Oscar is his little like yeah boss kind of <laughs> sidekick. He's just like a guy that they heap abuse upon. I have a question, just very yeah. quickly, uh, specifically for you, Murder Brian, because the three of us. Uh, don't have kids. I want to hear your take on Dale's parenting in this episode because there's a bit where he has this sort of like soliloquy <laughs> where he talks yeah. to himself. He's like, hmm, she's really going to fuck this up. And <laughs> should I tell her she's going to fuck this up or should I just let her crash and burn? I think I'm just going to watch this time. <laughs> and then it like fades away. I did not do stuff like that. Like I didn't like test her, but that's also because I'm an insane person. <laughs> <laughs> Like a lot of times I would say something before it was going to happen. And then when it happened, I would be like, ha, 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 I got you, motherfucker. I did that. I, I yeah. do that all the time still to this day. It's like, uh, you know, she's like, I, I want to get a job. She got a job. And now she's got to get up at seven right. o'clock in the morning on Saturday. And I'm like, ha, ha, take it. I told you not to get a job. I was giving you the same amount of money basically. for free. But thank you. Thank you for doing it. You're out of my hair. So you're actually taking that Dale Jacobs approach to the extreme. Uh, I do. Yeah. I do. I'm Dale Jacobs. But I also like am am, am sort of uh, I try to be loving about stuff. Mm -hmm. And when yeah. Yeah. I know things are going to get fucked. Yeah. When I know things are going to get fucked up and she does it anyway, it really isn't like a, a kind of I wouldn't do I wouldn't heap that on the neighborhood. How about I say it? Sure. Like, that? Mm -hmm. like in that like. He's like, go ahead, you know, do what you want to do. Now there's all these fucking people who aren't getting their lawn mowed. Well, right, because that's yeah. that's what happens <laughs> next is, like, Robin corners the market on yeah, lawn well, mowing so, immediately. I mean, it's funny because, like, before yeah. she hires the employees, like, this whole thing was about how she doesn't want to work. And then right. she ends up overworking herself. Right. Like, she's in yeah. serious trouble and probably, like, heavily dehydrated. Right. Uh, <laughs> Just covered in grass stains. Uh, uh, somehow. Yeah, um, somehow. Uh, she, she's called green sleeves yeah, yeah. what so, was that I, so, but once once she hires jack and oscar of course yeah, she, she moves over to the administrative side she she takes the calls and she skims 50 percent off of the top right so jack and oscar each make five dollars per lawn and she's making the other five robin discuss invents Destroy. the concept of a middleman uh brings the concept yep. of a middleman to odyssey which means that she this is technically the robin lehman trilogy uh, and and I, I want to be clear, too, me. these people are paying her better, and she's still probably paying Jack and Oscar better than John Avery Whitaker pays oh, his employees. Oh, no absolutely. Um, <laughs> and, and, and this is something, Brian, I don't, I don't know if you know, really, because these episodes didn't really feature John Avery Whitaker heavily. Except for uh, the, I heard the, him next the one, end yeah. of the other one, yeah. Wit, or Whit, as he calls himself. He what? That's yeah. him. He's sort of the all-knowing patriarch at the center of town who... Uh, Owns this combination ice cream truck, train emporium, Bible pl Bible room. Uh, with a time machine. With yeah. a time machine in it, which and we will get to. consequences. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't like that. Yeah. I don't like the sound of that. And a no-no door. So um, basically, he is the guy who is the ur-capitalist who yeah. runs the town. And you're exactly right, Brian Alford, that it is... If Wit was doing this job, he would be skimming more off the top and paying less at the bottom. It would be yeah. like fifteen dollars for the job, and you get three. This this causes some trouble because it turns out Jack's dad is a union man, <laughs> which is and this he is so good. <laughs> yeah, well, and also Robin is parading around town with her new dress that she was finally yeah, able to yeah, afford. Yeah, she finally got the dress. Her fine. Uh, Robin, how much was this dress? Like hundreds of dollars? Probably. Um, Robin's mom drags <laughs> like she her got for this at fucking pennies. Come no, on. No, she oh, went. Into, she went into Connellsville and went to the local Saks yeah. Fifth Avenue outpost. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, Robin's mom reads her for filth in the in the dress. She says uh, that the colors are too bright, but that it's mm. very nice, which. Mm. Struck me as a very Lucille Bluth moment. Yeah, of definitely. Saying, the color's too bright, dear, but anything to distract from your calves. Like, it just yeah. felt like a very <laughs> distinctive cut. And uh, the two the two lads also drag her for her dress when yeah. they come demanding some changes around here. Yeah. We thought we'd let you know that, uh, well, Oscar and I... Wait, what's wrong? We've unionized. Unionized? 
Hell Are you yeah. kidding me? Let's go. Unionized? Let's fucking go. <laughs> What's unionized mean? A labor union. My dad told me all about it. It's to make sure we workers aren't ripped off by you major corporations. <laughs> major corporation? Yeah, we're tired of the low wages and unfair treatment. But you've only been working for three days. That's two days longer than we should have. That's, That's right, right, Jack. Yeah, get her. Um, is, uh, so, Brian. This episode accidentally becomes good. Yeah, <laughs> accidentally based. And I'm curious, yeah. uh, Brian, if you saw this coming here or if you were surprised when they full on were like, oh, yeah, let's unionize. Yeah, I thought that was kind of cool. I actually I kind of dug that that wrinkle in the thing. And Jack's dad being the one that caused all the trouble is yeah. like, yeah. I feel like I'm a kind of a Jack dad. Yeah, sometimes. absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think I think in this world, in in Odyssey, Ohio, they have their own murder, <laughs> Brian. And it is yeah. Jack's dad. Yeah, uh, Jack's dad fucking local I love that the bad, the bad kid is the one that's a union person. But, but yeah. that's intentional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is completely intentional. Because yeah. they then go on to uh, sort of give their lists of demands, which I actually thought this yeah. part was really funny. So, well, they, so really they talk about her, you know, taking 50% of their value off the top. Yep. You were making $10 an hour and only paying us 5 I'm the boss. That's how they do it in the real world. Half? <laughs> You're supposed to get half of what we make? Yeah, that's what a boss is for, to make a lot of money while other people do the work. Based. Yeah, that's well, maybe that was right. true in the old days, but we're union now. We want more money. So, like, like they're making fun of the union stuff, too, but, like, they're really, this feels like what's happening in crypto right now. It's like, we're going to make a brand new market that's free of all of the constraints. No, 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 not like that. Stop it. Wait, <laughs> shouldn't. Someone, something has to, no, 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 no. (laughs) And then they suddenly just start recreating the entire like 18th century economy. Right. Well, genuinely, it all sounds so good to me. Like it's, uh, there's never really a counterpoint. And Robin is technically in the wrong. She's so in the, like obviously in the wrong. And Odyssey actually like says that. It goes out of its way to say how, how fucked like Robin is treating her workers. So is this episode pro union? Like I'm having a really hard time squaring this circle. She gets hosed here. I mean, there, yeah. there's a, a work stoppage. She tries to field the calls. It's a disaster. Her business collapses. No one gets their lawns mowed. Uh, mm-hmm. And she she's she's stuck having to to meet these boys where they are. I mean, I love that the negotiations actually break down like as yeah. it would yeah. actually happen in real life where they both come to the table. And by the table, I mean, Robin's front door. And they're both like going back and forth about Direct like action. what the number should be. And they can't agree on a number. And so they're like, yeah. fuck it. We're out of here. We're striking. Yep. So that, good. That number being a 25 cent difference, which based on most nego- union negotiations is pretty true. That's yeah, pretty like, Accurate, accurate, right, honestly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's accurate from everything I hear mm-hmm. from organizers and stuff. It's like they really are good over nothing. Yep. Well, it's about like not not get ceding power. It's not, right, you yes. know, especially for Lucy, uh, for Lucy, sorry, Lucy Cunningham Schultz for me, Howard Schultz. Like it's all just kind of like men- merging together <laughs> in my head. Um, that's her dad is Howard Schultz. And so she should have just yeah, gotten okay. her to learn about yeah, how yeah. to bust some unions. Yeah. Uh, but she, Robin can't concede power, right? She, uh, even right. though yeah. she desperately needs workers, because if there's one thing this episode teaches is that ultimately you do need workers to make your business run effectively. Yeah. Mm hmm. I also want to say that when she's fielding the calls and shutting down the business, that is the third phone montage that happens in this episode. Because <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. there's one when she's working alone. One, this was montage week because we get a couple in the next episode too. Yeah. For some reason, there's just a lot of montages going on. Look, as someone who writes something for this podcast every week, they can't all be winners. You know, yeah. you got to cut so, some quarters so, here and there. So Robin is defeated. She's once yep. again on her her bed. And Dale comes in, Mm -hmm. and this is the scene that made parents very, very mad. Oh, interesting. We've talked before about how the parents who are so important to focus on the family. Yeah, we're focusing on them. Huge (laughs) bitches. They suck dick. (laughs) They're awful. They're the Nancy Reagans of fans. Previously, they had a bumbling cop character on this series named David Harley. Not too much of an idiot, but just a bit of a dullard. And parents got mad, so they had to remove every episode featuring him from circulation. Later, they did an episode because there were complaints from parents that they weren't featuring any kids who were homeschooled. So they did an episode about homeschooling. Mm. Mm. And the parents of the homeschooled kids got mad. Oh, did it portray the homeschooled kids as freaks? (laughs) No, it didn't. It just wasn't right. It just wasn't the way all homeschoolers are. So they got Got mad again. It's not not like me specifically. Why I I get I get uncomfy when it's not about me. (laughs) 
Yeah. <laughs> so this is a third time people listened to this episode and said, this is starting to sound like a communist episode right. of Adventures in Odyssey. Right. <laughs> Comrade Paul McCusker here now, this, this uh, has version written a communist episode. So this, is, this has been changed. Right. This has been altered. I could not find the broadcast version of this episode online. This is whatever got packaged into the, the tapes, the CDs, and later the MP3s on the Adventures in Odyssey app. Right, because the, the, the point that we end up hearing here is that it is about the value of hard work. We get back to the Protestant yeah. work ethic again. You know, the best wage is that which you're making for a and, hard and day's we'll work. And we'll get a little bit of, yeah. of Dale Jacobs here. Well, my guess is that you learn that starting your own business is a good thing, but hard work. There's no easy way around it. Mm. But that's okay, because the best wage is the one you get for a fair day's work. Aha! Uh -huh. People uh -huh. really don't feel good about themselves if they get paid a lot of money for doing nothing. Oh, <laughs> fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> so, fuck I, off. you know, I spent more than a year doing nothing and getting money, and... Mm -hmm. It felt pretty good. Uh, <laughs> it, it felt really good. Uh, but Brian, at what cost to your eternal soul? That, mm. That's my question. Mm. Are, are you, you know, um, yeah, um, that's a good I'm point. willing to give it up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm willing to give mine up yeah. for sure. So then after this, Robin attempts to negotiate with her own dad about allowance. But dad's always going to have the upper hand from a negotiating position. Like he can right. withdraw. There's a different power differential. There. Exactly. Like, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And so Robin. It does not depend on her labor. Robin actually ends up deciding to give the boys the full $10, which is weird because she's still doing the work of scheduling. Like she's definitely eligible like for some compensation for her labor. Labor, but um, she just yeah. gives them all of the money. Yeah, um, workers have ownership. Chris lets us know at the end that God doesn't like cheaters, and that's the yeah, end of the yeah. episode. Yeah. So yeah. she, but yeah. so Robin says this, which is really interesting. Why'd you change your mind? A worker must be worthy of his wages. That, that music is so loud. That synth is so loud. But she says a worker must be worthy of his wages. Right. Which is like a callback, mm. but no one actually said this earlier. Which is what I think she's probably referencing some of the lines that got. I removed. think, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's interesting, this line from the Bible here, a, worther, a worker must be worthy of his wages, is a misquote. Because the oh. line is, a worker is worthy of his wages. Not that they must, like, attain that worthiness, but by the mere virtue of working, they are worthy of this, right? And this, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to get into Bible Corner for a second here. Oh, but, boy. Um, Brian's of course, Bible Corner. <laughs> oh, God, it's full of cobwebs. <laughs> In the Pentateuch, or There's the Torah. There's a strange man Of course, there down. is the verse, and if you ever played Civilization V, you're familiar with it. Thou shalt not muzzle the ox when he treadeth out the corn. Right? When an ox is pulling a plow, it's going to want to eat some of the vegetables in the field, right? And you have to let it. And the same is true for people. For as Jesus said to his own followers as he was sending out the 71 to go ahead of him, to accept all food and drink offered to them while they witnessed, because a worker is worthy of his wages. This comes up a lot in the Pauline scripture. Of course, we uh, Dale Jacobs references 2 Thessalonians, where Paul mentions that if there are people who are part of that church, and the, the, the church at Thessalonica was particularly hard up, Paul and Silas had been run out of there because they kept trying to convert this one synagogue, and uh, people weren't having it. Brian uh, it was, is glowing was, right now. He's like was hovering going a for few them. feet off the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and they... Uh, they had to work really hard just to stay alive. And Paul himself had to work when he was at Thessalonica. So he's saying okay. others have to do it too. But a lot of that re-quoting of a worker is worthy of his wages is Paul writing to other churches and being like, so some people were getting on my ass about mm. taking a break and enjoying some shit, but I work really <laughs> fucking Fuck all, hard and I deserve like a little bit of, of Paul yep. time. So thank <laughs> you very much. I deserve it. But the Bible is very constantly is like if you work you deserve what you get and bosses kind of suck shit sure except for the parables where there's like a master and his slaves giving them money but that master's always god and god's always going to be a bigger asshole because he's allowed to be so uh anyway. brian i want to bring you back into the conversation again um and <laughs> you ask, didn't feel included in the bible corner i'm brian? trying to <laughs> I, I feel included <laughs> it's, it's weird we're all I'm floating learning, so we're well, all floating three inches the, off the, thing the, about the bible <laughs> corner the thing about the bible corner is that there's space for all it is so, very cramped but <laughs> but there is room you know this is a weird one because yes it's produced by focus on the family yes it is a representation in some ways of focus on its family focus on the family's mission but it ends on a note that really 
reinforces the importance and the value of the worker relative to mm-hmm. management. And so I'm just kind of curious to hear broadly your thoughts on that. I, I don't really think that they see it that way, though. You yeah. know, sure. like, yeah, we look at it and we see exactly what they're saying. Mm-hmm. But like they also claim to know that workers are important. Yeah. But the way that they do it is that you don't tax them. You know what I mean? Oh, sure. Like, like the government's always yeah. taking right. away their money. Right. It's not the the boss gives them the money. So yeah, that's it's a really good. good point. So, you know, it makes me think that maybe it was written and some fuddy duddy heard it and uh-huh. was like, uh, it, and was like, wait a minute, this seems pretty communist <laughs> to me. I don't like it, yeah. but that's because it's hard not to be communist when you're advocating for workers, yes. which they will never figure out. Yeah. But that is right. the real reason why it became communist. Right. Do, do you want to know how much they paid their actors to uh, make this episode of Adventures in Odyssey? I would say nothing. Was it 10 bucks an hour? It was a single session rate, $50. Oh, this episode right. last aired uh, a month ago on the radio internationally. Do you know how much the actors in this episode see in residuals? I'm going to guess zero. That is correct. It's zero dollars, yeah. They get absolutely nothing. Um, the actor who played Jimmy Barkley back in the day, uh, he, he's talked about this quite a bit, David Griffin, where he, he did uh, like 80 episodes, 70 episodes, and he sees nothing from that, right? He did all those episodes in uh, the late 80s, early 90s, and then a couple like in the middle of the 2000s. Um, Odyssey now, of course, has an after agreement because they couldn't keep running and keep hiring sure. all of these union actors uh, in the age of the Internet. Right, right, right. But yeah, they didn't pay shit. And, and they even have some issues with their Colorado Springs location when they were getting it built. Uh, a lot of issues relating to labor and with on the job injuries that will come up again later uh, in I think it's 1994 when the hostage situation happened. Yeah, well, and but, there's there's other stuff there too, like the internal yeah, sorry, work culture hostage of, situation. Yeah, baby. <laughs> we'll get there. The internal <laughs> the internal uh, culture of focus on the family as well. It should come as no surprise that the office culture was one of uh, people staying really late and you know not actually going home to be with home with their families. Yes, rather yes. ironically, um, right. many of whom homeschooled. You've got this weird situation here, right, where. The value of labor is such an interesting thing to me in this sort of reactionary mindset, because obviously, on the one hand, you have the extreme Australian types who, you know, see it as that world of fundamental prime movers, you know, and and so we need to teach them how to think objectively and how to prepare for a job. Do you mean Austrian? Uh, did I say, what did I say? You said, said Australian? Australian? <laughs> I was like, where I is this going? And I was like, oh, Bismarck Lerman? He really does not pay his people no, well. No, I think this is still like residual <laughs> COVID brain fog. I'm still having trouble finding those little pieces. Thank you. Austrian fucking Von Mises and that shit. Anyway, the the Australian school, if it ever catches on, I'm sure is far more dangerous. Absolutely. (laughs) Anyway, the question that I was going to ask, Brian, how do you see sort of this arc? Because, you know, we now have talked about this perception and this portrayal of labor and of labor issues in the late 80s versus the portrayal of how a kid should get a job in like last year. Has this really shifted substantially? Is it a a shift in the messaging or is it also a shift in the fundamental philosophy? Yeah, I don't think it has anything to do with the philosophy. Uh, I I think that like if every shop was unionized and people were making money, Mm -hmm. they there would still be a shitload of, you know, anti-union people Mm -hmm. just because people aren't like coherent. You know, right. they, nobody's <laughs> politics are coherent. Right. They're usually like kind of like c- out of convenience for them. It's like, yeah, I advocate for bosses because I'm a boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, it's very hard not to advocate for like just whatever. And I don't think that people like this see hypocrisy at all, mm. ever. Like they, they would never think that anything that they're saying is hypocritical. And, uh, they probably would work for a union Mm -hmm. if offered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Like they talk so much about these, uh, uh, collective, the, uh, right to work. Yeah. Where they're like, 
You don't have to join the union. And it's like, if you go in there, most people will just join the union. Right. They will just join it anyway. Yeah. And they will be happy that they're in it and have the money and then go vote for people who would strip them of union. Rights. For sure. Yes. Just because they said something about, I don't know, uh, they got mad about critical race theory. So we're, we're getting rid of it. And I, I think that like in the eighties too, early 80s now i'm i wasn't around mm -hmm. well, i was around i was alive but yeah, sure. i wasn't thinking about these types of issues in the 80s i don't think that the anti-union stuff had hardened as much and i also don't think that they had gotten their shit together mm -hmm. yet by then like right. the conservatives i don't really feel like had their shit together by this time i don't really think they got their shit together until i i kind of lean towards that that george bush election mm -hmm. was really when they really really got it all together yep. i mean they did win with reagan twice but against like you know i mean the but, mondale and it, and right. but the right. bush bush George W. Bush administration yeah. and yeah. everything after that was just like they would have never slipped up and accidentally been communist. I think you're right. They I would have had some. It's like all of the pieces they were in the process of putting them into place, and then once W. Bush was elected, then they were able to finally start executing on those objectives. But you're yeah, right. You saw that flood of. Uh, right to work laws and right mm -hmm. to work yeah, on the state level, right? Boom, yeah. boom, 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 one after another. Huge, huge in Florida, I know. Yeah, but yeah. But, but I think you're exactly right too, Brian, that the, the, the message discipline is so much tighter now. Like there mm -hmm. is a script, mm -hmm. there is a playbook. I think that's what we're seeing with this Prayer You stuff t as well, is that they're so close to the script, they're not going to slip up and they're going to stay, you know, completely on message and on brand as long as possible. So, but Josh, they're having so much fun in the outtakes. Oh, they're yeah. laughing. They're <laughs> dancing. Though, those are the worst outtakes I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Those really? are just horrible. The uh, editing is also incredibly bad. Poor on that. Um, yeah. I did actually have a question for you, Murder Brian, because you've watched, I think, a little bit more PragerU stuff than I have. Um, at the end of the video, they ask, they talk about chicken drumsticks. Uh, no clue. Okay. <laughs> he said, leave, no leave a chicken idea. drumstick in the comments. And then the comments were disabled. And I felt like, well, I. <laughs> yeah, they're probably having it's anything to get people to comment. Yeah, it's an optimizing for the algo player. But no, they did make yeah. something that was like, that's like a little inside joke for the real heads oh, or whatever. Boy. Like, yeah, it was. They, oh, there's something. I wish I knew. There's around. lore around the, the chicken drumstick. And, and well, now AJ is going to have to hunt it down like Indiana Jones. Well, it is funny you should mention that actually because mm -hmm. um before mm -hmm. we came on i actually was able to hunt down a little bit of prager you lore and mm -hmm. i found a tablet uh -huh. uh, that had this just picture of a chicken carved on it and on the yeah. back it had this very interesting message and i think we golden might golden tablet aj um yeah but you can't see it uh, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, it's gone now. But, <laughs> but I, I totally it saw it. It's real. Uh, uh, I was by a tree. Uh -huh. um, also, uh, I'll be leaving the I show to go to Utah then. pretty soon. So if you, okay. know. but uh, yeah, I think we might hear a little bit of that during this commercial break. Hey there, bewildered octogenarians of Facebook. I'm conservative radio personality and melting Madame Tussauds statue, Dennis Prager. Are you tired of children's entertainment getting too woke? Does the sight of cartoons kissing fill you with blood curdling rage? Did the sweet life of Zack and Cody turn your kids way, way too gay? Then you're gonna love Prager You Kids. It combines all the joys of children's programming with the paranoia and volume of Janine Pirro three Chardonnays deep. You don't want to see her at four. Your kids will gain all sorts of life lessons that the radical left is too cut to talk about, like how to get a job, how to be reasonably green, and how to rat out your friends for being no good communists. All of those are real. So subscribe to PragerU today and then give us that sweet donation money so we can continue making our quality programming and fulfilling the prophecy carved into the great golden tablet passed down through the Prager line for generations. On one side, the carving of an enormous chicken drumstick. On the other, the deepest, darkest secrets of my family that must never be read by human eyes. I'm holding it now. It radiates warmth. I feel it pulsating like a heartbeat, almost like it's breathing. Oh, what could one little peak hurt? I'll just turn it over and... 
Oh. Oh my. It says... You may view God as a father, but to him you are no more than a chicken. And when you die and return to him, he will feast upon your flesh forever. You are nothing but delicious meat to the Lord our God. If you don't believe me, then why not try you for yourself? Oh, I look delicious. Oh, 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 I taste like God. 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 So tune in to PragerU Kids today, exclusively streaming on our website where you can't leave comments that might hurt our feelings. PragerU Kids. What's a Prager me? What's a Prager you? The soy thing is so interesting with like children's entertainment because like the affect is what you soy is when you have straight people doing something gay that they don't realize is gay. Hmm. So like hmm. children's television, most of the men that you see on it, maybe not most, but the best ones that you'll see are usually gay. And so what you get is like an imitation of the style of the best like. I mean, it, gay men fill a, 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 a very significant role in our society as teachers, as as like children's entertainers and things like that. People just don't realize that. And so then sure. you get these like guys who go up and they're straight and they're like, what if I just yell and get kind of feminine, but I don't know how because that's not me. Mm. That's how soy happens. Mm. And so it's like, I don't know, it's just so this this whole attack on on drag for kids is like. Interesting because besides just being horrifying, there's also just like this weird thing that we just pretended like this is not something that we do in other venues. Right. Like right. When I was a kid, we always had like this fall festival Halloween alternative thing that we'd have at church. And there was not not every single year, but there tended to be like a. A, a booth that would be manned by one of the older guys at the church dressed as like an old pioneer woman. And that was, Oh sure. You know, just like here's one of the old guys at the church dressed as an old pioneer woman. Ha ha. Right. Sure. Like it was always there. Like people doing drag in a way that's like a form of clowning mm -hmm. that, that, is part of just like how you interact with kids and, and, and to say nothing of like the Southern places where, you know, boys will dress up as cheerleaders and stuff like that. It's like an annual event. There's a fucking King of the Hill episode about it, right? Like counterpuff. Yeah. 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 Well, and I have distinct memories too of like when I was a kid, we had a big costume box in the basement and you know, mm -hmm. sometimes you just like put on whatever. Sometimes one day you will yeah. be a judo man <laughs> wearing a, like a fucking, you know, uh, martial arts garb. And then the next day you'll be a fucking like lady in a pink dress. It doesn't really matter. Like it, it's just, it is a fun way to play with one's own presentation. No, sorry, Josh, you pedophiled yourself when you God did that. God damn it. Yeah. Fuck. I'm sure in Ohio, especially lately, this, it, it, they're probably pushing this shit pretty hard, right? Uh, the anti-trans stuff somewhat. I mean, I don't run in those circles. Right. So like it, all of my information comes from like, just because I'm around, I read some of the worst fucking shit right. in yeah. the world. Right. Yeah. But uh, yeah, they're they're like trying to do stuff. I it doesn't seem like it's taking here. Okay. I really, I mean, it's obviously people are freaked out by trans people mm -hmm. everywhere for mm -hmm. some reason. Right. It just they can't handle it. But like, I don't I don't know how many like regular people like care that much. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. This mm -hmm. isn't a thing in their list of grievances, which is probably mostly five dollars a gallon gas right, and right, food being right, super right. expensive. I think it's up to seven well, the, in LA the, now. Jeez. The, the, the thing is, like uh that's all the trans people. They're 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 transing the refineries, which is slowing down production. <laughs> oh god damn it. On gasoline, yeah. Well they yeah. gotta cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean that's the thing you see that in polls. Yeah. Like people don't genuinely just don't give a shit about mm -hmm. like the the gay or trans issues that are happening it this is more about just mobilizing the people who are the most mobilized right
Right. And I'm yeah. older. I'm, I'm like way older. And like, uh, I've said this, like on, I think two different shows recently, mm -hmm. but when I was at my most conservative moment in my life, right? Mm -hmm. Like I went through heavy conservative phase, oh, okay. you know, I, I was listening okay. to Rush Limbaugh while I was, while I was working at the, uh, uh, cable company. I was in a van all day. How, how old were you at that time? Uh, 24. I worked there from like 22 to 29. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. So 2004 or so, you know, I, I was listening to a lot of this stuff. I switched to lib in like 2004, but I'm even saying before 2004 and stuff at my most sort of homophobic period of my life, which I mean, you know, I'm 43 years old. I grew up in Groveport, Ohio. Mm -hmm. uh, it was hard not to have that period. Mm. There was never a time where I was like, gay people shouldn't be allowed to do gay stuff. Like I never in my life <laughs> right. was like, I may, I mean, mine was like, Oh, it's just kind of gross. It's like the, the thing of ignorance. Yeah. 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 Just keep yeah, it away yeah. from me, man. I don't want to see that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's all it was. It was never, ever, ever about telling people they couldn't do the things mm -hmm. that they wanted to do in their life. And I tend to believe that most people fall on that mm -hmm. side of the spectrum yeah. where like, even if they don't like, like it or whatever, they think it's gross. They still are like, well, but if you want to do it, I, I don't, as long as it. I don't have to you know? see it or whatever. But then I think that's where the drag stuff comes into play. Right. Because then it's like, mm -hmm. you're throwing these perversions in my face or whatever. And that, then it becomes right. a bit which more is, of a wedge. Which also is interesting. It's like an aspect of online that we all engage in where we all just self traumatize by looking at the worst things that we can imagine mm -hmm. and then start a podcast about it. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, it's also, it's like, well, that's the evangelical mindset, right? It's right. like, it's, it's not like the fact that it even exists at all is just yeah. terrifying mm -hmm. and actually something that is unsustainable for them. Like it yeah. has to be rooted out and you, they have to tell you to live their lives, including it up to how to take care of a piece of cloth. Yeah. So well, let's talk exactly. about the fucking American flag. You know, we can't. Well, one thing that traumatizes me personally mm -hmm. is when I see a flag being mistreated. I, yeah. I, the, I can't stand it's it. It's the worst. God. I just want to say I watched a video. Oh, you guys might love it. You you might want to give it a shot. Mm. James Dobson on masturbation. Oh, hell yes, dude. Okay, Brian, I have to on tell you something real fast. <laughs> yeah. So mm -hmm. James Dobson wrote a book. This is actually the first time I think I'm saying this on the podcast. Um, might as well. Might as well get there. So James Dobson wrote a book about adolescence. Mm. That yes, then preparing was for adolescence. As a like six cassette tape uh, thing okay. where James Dobson himself is, is doing the audio book. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. With his weird little, like, I don't even know how to <laughs> classify his voice, but... Can um, you do, do the impression? You're about to do the impression. I want to hear it. I'm yeah. trying to, like... It, it went well, a little Reagan. Know, when you're going in, into adolescence, <laughs> there are some feelings that you... It's like this kind yeah. of, like, the Louisiana's still kind of there in there, but, like... It sounds like a portly animated mouse. And he's, yeah. like, putting on a fake smile the whole time. It's very yeah, unnerving. Yeah, and it's that very, like... Well, because he's a therapist, so he's, like, being right. very gentle. Right. And then... He gave me my sex talk is what I'm saying. Oh, here. you prepared oh, for adolescence with like, James Dobson? I that my sex talk. Oh, God, I'll, I'll get it even further into the detail. Here. <laughs> uh, here we go. I had listened to like earlier parts of this series and then like hearing the sex tape from the <laughs> James Dobson, Dobson sex, sex tape, tape just uh, dropped from the oh, series boy. was because uh, I because, you know, I lived I lived about 120 miles west of Albuquerque. So it was a two hour drive in Albuquerque. And the orthodontist, Dr. Hurt, not joking, was in Albuquerque. <laughs> and so it would be like having to I'd have to take a day off from school to drive to Albuquerque to get my braces tightened or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so my mom put in the, the James Dobson preparing for adolescence tape. Oh, my and God. We both, I think I was just like playing on the fucking like Game Boy. We both sat there in silence and listened to the tape. And then when it ended, my mom was like, did you get all that? <laughs> I kind of found it interesting mm -hmm. that the first part doesn't come off that evil, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure does. Other than being... It, 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 the way he says is like, hey, you know, the number one reason why masturbation is harmful is because you will promise God you'll never do it again. 
Mm. And uh, then you know you're going to go back Damn. on it. Damn. Damn. That, you know that's what I some mean? real projection there, Dobson. So really, <laughs> all you have to He's do right. is, is never promise God. That, that also yeah. feels that feels downright Catholic to me, that, that way is, of looking is, at it. Right. You're making Jephthah's <laughs> vow at that point. Me. But I said that I had the same thing. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I, I was never really religious, mm. but when I was nine, ten years old, when you start jerking off right, or yeah. whatever, and you don't really know what you're doing, yeah. once you find out what you're doing, I would, I thought I was going to get in trouble for mm. it. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. I don't, I, I believed in a sort of nebulous God. So I would always say, <laughs> look, I'm not going to do this again. Yeah. There's no yeah. way. Nothing will ever make me do this again. And then the very next day <laughs> I'm in there fucking jacking off again. <laughs> look, look, and like, it's late night adult yeah, swim. I have a problem. How, how, could I, how could I fall into this again? There's late night adult <laughs> swim. Girls got wild commercial comes right, on. It's right, all of a sudden. Right, it's right, like, right. Well, what, I mean, what are you going to do? You hear, you hear those steel drums and me. <laughs> <laughs> Pavlovian response. That's awesome. So, I I immediate like, and then when I'm done, I'm like, all right, I'm not gonna do it again. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. This is never happening again. And that's the guilt. But then the part comes, and I'm like, that's really good that he's telling parents not to like teach their kid not to have guilt about touching their peepees or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then I was, and yeah. then the next part yeah. comes on, he was like. Now, the second problem is if they start jerking off in a group. (laughs) (laughs) And he said, it's because they're sexual. It's not set in stone yet. So if Mm. boys jerk off in a room with other boys or girls, then that is enough to turn them gay oh. because it mm. messes, it moves the wiring around in of their course, brain. Of course, mm-hmm. that's how it in happens. In order is to that, make them attractive to men. Is that how men. it happens? Is that how you become gay? Well, yeah. You know, that, well, that's, and that's, thing, that's James Dobson. So because in the, in the tapes where it's just talking to the young adolescent, right, not talking to the parents, is like, don't worry. If you're worried that you're going to become gay, don't worry mm. about it. God's not gonna let you just become gay. Wait, so like that's something you Brian, have to why do like, you think, really. Why do you think God like let you become gay? Then what's what's uh, your read on he's that? He's a fucking faggot. Okay, God's gay it. as shit. Got it. Yeah. Okay, cool. God, God loves seeing dudes suck dick, so he <laughs> makes some of us like no, just no, no. turn that way. The okay. reason God is gay is because <laughs> when he was a teenager, he would get around with all of his buddies and he oh. put a little cracker at the center of the room. <laughs> right, just God and James Dobson and C.S. Lewis. <laughs> well. If I'm not mistaken, I'll say this. If I'm not mistaken, also in the video, he talks about like, you know, kind of we need to keep an eye on our boys when they're at camp and like all this stuff. Like he's talking Mm -hmm. about kids going to camp and different situations where you could end up in a gay situation. Like that. A lot of projection happening with Dobbs. Does he talk about female masturbation at all or does he only focus? Okay. Okay. Absolutely. The smallest amount, though. He really because because girls don't like it. Hey, Jay. That's what he said. Right. Yeah. What? Right. That's basically, he's like, girls well, that's don't just necessarily true. like But they've gone off. wild. <laughs> the girls yes. have gone wild. But they're doing that for us. Right. They're, that's all for us. He said that they just don't have the same sorts of desires as men. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's funny because there is also, I can maybe even try to send you guys some of this oh, stuff please that do. I listen please to. Please do. Yeah. Because there's another one where him and another guy that, he played an interview with they both him and another. Off. <laughs> that would be great. No, they played an interview with him and some doctor guy mm. from 30 years ago. Yeah, yeah. About what men want from a marriage, but then they do it from like a female perspective. Mm. And so they start talking about what women need to understand oh, about men's sex drives. Yeah, it's these two and dudes. That's yeah. so cool. It's uh, just so two good. old guys <laughs> just fucking sitting there talking about like, well, you got to understand, you don't want to have sex. You're not wired that way. Unreal. Men need it all the time. Well, you got to get a set We are definitely going to have to spend more time in a future episode talking about some of this stuff. And I know that we will, but I yeah. want to bring it back now to uh, PragerU kids and some slightly more kid-friendly discussion. Yeah, some, something that that actually keeps kids chased That's away right. from masturbation, especially circle no. jerking, and that is folding the American flag. That's right. Flag. That's right. You yeah. can't jerk no off. Sex talk <laughs> you can't jerk off and fold the flag at the same time. You should be spending all of your time folding flags so that both of your hands are occupied and you can't touch your own penis. Yeah. 
Yeah, and also, you know, uh, if only you Harvey sure, Kellogg had known. <laughs> you gotta keep, you gotta keep the communists out of your group, though. Mm-hmm. If you're an American, <laughs> uh, yeah. if you're an American, chances are you own an American flag. Here's what you need to know to be a successful flag owner. <laughs> You'll need the help of a friend to do it properly. First, make sure your friend is not a communist. Because if there's That's a communist, That's then, a good line. then there's going to be uh, there's going to be a lot of group sessions because communists uh, <laughs> masturbate in groups. That's right. That's it's right. all about. It's all it's my like 11 year old communist friend. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Once you actually get down to it, you got to fold it into triangles. Stars stay in the top left. Once it's folded up, you should just see the stars. The Pledge of Allegiance was written by a socialist, <laughs> and it was for a magazine that was giving away like free flags. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I didn't know that. Not not a whole yeah, lot. It's a it's a bad it's a black mark on the history of socialism, honestly. Mm. But yeah. yeah, not not a whole lot to this one though. Other than they're just so obsessed with communists, and the whole joke here is that like I guess the the flag is sort of like your clove of garlic when it comes to dealing with communists, right? Or yeah. your wooden stake. It's yeah. the thing that they cannot tolerate is the American flag. She ends the video saying, "Go convert your communist friends and mm. give them an American flag," as right. if that's the thing that like will fully banish communism from them forever. I, I like too, Brian, that you put this on the playlist right after the critical thinking video. It was like, think critically. Anyway, here's our flag <laughs> and how you should never. <laughs> Like they don't even depict some of the flag no nos. Yeah, they they, they, they use they, a fake flag. They, they use a take false flag. A white <laughs> piece of fabric and write. Fa- they just write the words "fake flag" yeah. in the middle of it, and they they're sure just do. like, "Ha ha!" Here's all the things you shouldn't oh, do with your flag, like uh, throwing it in the garbage, for example. Yeah, that's an odd line. <laughs> I mean, I found that to be very weird. Don't store it in the trash. <laughs> where okay, I don't store anything in the trash. I mean, but they don't talk about it. They don't. They don't talk about burning a flag, which I thought was very interesting. No, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if they'd wanted you're, to, you're supposed to do that too, yeah. right? Yeah, right. that's yeah, that's they what you're so, fire. That's the that's the way to get rid of it instead of right. throwing it in the trash. Yeah, if you give it a proper burning. I, yeah. I, I mean, mm-hmm. as I, I think, like the way to do this, if you wanted to go all in on the anti-communist thing, would be to burn a Soviet flag, right? Wouldn't that yeah, be do the play? All the no no, throw, throw, the, like, throw yeah. the Soviet flag in the trash can. I mean, yeah, but I think maybe that would be a little bit too. What's interesting about all they these don't Prager want U videos? Touching it, yeah, right. Yeah, well, uh, I, I, there's a thing about all these Prager U videos is that they're they're trying to do actually what the first video is all about, which is objective thinking, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. They don't want to go out of their way and say be like full propaganda, except for like a couple of moments that. Pop, like go convert right. your communist friends. Now that you know how to handle your flag, go do something patriotic, like converting your communist friend and buying him a flag. Thanks for watching. Until next time, stop yelling, start thinking. Right. But this is just supposed to be like the most rational thing, you know, in the world. You have to treat your flag, right? Because yeah. I mean, that's just objectively Stand the truth. By your flag. <laughs> you have yeah. to fold it exactly 13 times, except right. in this video where they fold it 14 times and it drove <laughs> me fucking insane. It's also there well, shouldn't the be any red left. doesn't count. The tuck doesn't mm. count as a fold. <sighs> I know this I unfortunately say, from experience being a Southern Baptist. I, uh, yeah, I would also <laughs> say something that makes me nuts about these videos specifically is that one again who is this for what age yeah. group is folding the flag for yeah i'm very curious about that because yeah. when you start talking about like your communist friends i mean you're talking 18 right yeah you're not yeah. Years there, there, are, there aren't 11 year old <laughs> communists running around i mean or the coolest maybe, 16 year old on the block maybe man. maybe back yes. in the day david horowitz was technically yes, an 11 year old communist exactly but where my like, brain other went. than that <laughs> yeah it's like maybe there's like 13 there's like maybe six 13 year old right. communists in the entire country <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like, and this video is for you like no because <laughs> I, I think like the, they're it, all signed up to our patreon <laughs> that's uh, exactly right though brian like th- when i remember at that that age um being in a pretty conservative area it was so edgy j- to just be a lib like that was the yeah. far left end of yeah. the spectrum was like if you consistently voted for democrats you know what i mean have i told the story about how i got accosted by a real flag guy when i was like uh, eight or no. nine years old a flag guy <laughs> yeah you know the guys a flag 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 fucker. Uh, new, no, new guy know. just yeah. dropped it's the flag yeah, guy, the flag yeah. guy. Uh, i was eight or nine just kind of running around the house like an idiot and uh the doorbell rang and i answered it and there was this very old curmudgeonly man who had a uh, a hat that said um you know a veteran i forget which war mm-hmm. he was a vet from but he you know he was an older gentleman and he said hi is your mom or dad home and i said uh uh no uh because i was a lying little shit and <laughs> um 
Uh, and he said, well, you have to tell your mom and dad that you have an American flag outside and it's touching the ground. And if you don't change that, I'm going to come back here with the police. What? And then I was like, <laughs> OK, I'll tell them. And then he left and I told my parents and they were like, thank you for not saying that we were home. <laughs> <laughs> my, my father in law is a real flag guy. Ooh. And uh, he lives next. He lives in uh, the middle of nowhere, Ohio, uh, southern Ohio, in a converted modular classroom. Like those little portables? Yeah. Oh, and okay. it's next to what used to be an elementary school. That's a very specific okay. type of guy. So I already have like yeah. a mental image going. This is great. <laughs> I have no mental image. This is a new guy to me. <laughs> <laughs> and next door, and, and he lives next door to this little school that was out way out in the country. And they were flying a flag on the last day of school forever, you know, yeah. and they left it up there and it got fucking tattered. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, of course, yeah. He went on Amazon and bought a new flag, <laughs> disposed of the flag that was already hanging up what? there, <laughs> and then was telling me about it. And I said, dude, that is like the dumbest shit <laughs> I've ever in my life. Well, because he wouldn't dispose of flags around me when me and my wife first got together because he said I would start dancing around with it. Like he he, <laughs> he knows what my politics are, you know, but he's like a Trump guy. And like, ooh, active yeah, fire. He, Don't mind if I do. <laughs> yeah, he he bought. Yeah, he went and bought a new one and, and flew it up the thing. And I just found that to be I I just think of that as like. I don't even like look at flags. I mm -hmm. actually, I'll tell you this too. This is a real quick thing. I, I, as a cable guy, I had worked there for seven years. So I was training people three years in, you know, they, they kind of, they, when they get new hires, uh, they ride with you in your truck sure. while you do your job yeah. and they do that for weeks. And I had had this, this conservative Christian boy. Uh, he, I think he was like, 24 and I was like 26 mm -hmm. and we would have these conversations. This is 2004. Um, we would have these conversations cause he was conservative and I had, I was John Kerry liberal. Oh guy. hell yes, dude. And, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. we would argue about politics and stuff. And, uh, there was this day where we were driving down a 50 mile an hour, two lane road. Mm -hmm. And he said, stop, stop pull over and so i fucking slammed on the brakes and pulled over to the side of the road he got out of the car and ran behind the truck and then came back and got back in the cable truck with one of those little american flags that you would put in your car window what? oh yeah yeah, yeah. They have a like little post 9 11 yeah. everybody oh, had them God. and he was like i i had to i saw that on the ground i i got a <laughs> I gotta dispose of that properly. Oh wow! <laughs> and I was just like, never tell me to stop for a flag. Awesome. The, the big one I remember seeing after 9/11 was people putting little American flags on their car radio antenna back when cars still had antennas. Mm -hmm. Sure, that yeah. was the one I saw everywhere. Yeah. I okay. So here's the thing I have about the flag is just like all these rules that they have about the star you know, never flying the flag upside down. Kind of uh -huh. all goes out the window when you start getting into the. Uh, blue lives matter flags, the thin blue line American flags. Oh yeah, right? yeah, yeah, no, it goes those entirely out the window. Those yeah. are thrown. Those are thrown upside down all the fucking well, time. And, and, and the fact that the blue line is even on there is a violation of flag code. But they don't right. care. Yeah. No, no, they're starting. I mean, they're, they've almost accidentally invented just uh, the gay pride American flag because at this point they're just yeah. all literally almost all the colors right. of the rainbow are on there. There's one for forest. Rangers, there's like a green line now. There's a green line flag, so I guess you know. I, I, I support I, that. I, I, that's, I, that's absolutely, yeah, no, I'm fine with Forest that. Rangers. Um, but yeah. it is so weird, like that they're so specific they got about spurs that jingle jangle. Jingle jangle as I go riding merrily along. Jingle jangle. No one has seen that movie, but anyway. Um, um, but <laughs> I like the yellow one that's for dispatchers or tow truck drivers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Those are both very important we need, jobs. We need one yeah. for like forklift operators. <laughs> it's, uh, is there one for podcasters yet? There's got to be one for podcasters, right? No, but I do have a, a one saved in my phone that somebody made for awesome. me. Oh, <laughs> what, what's on it? I Just all the other lines and then one that says podcaster. <laughs> yeah. It's like a goof. What are you doing? God's work on the Absolutely. project. Absolutely. Absolutely. But yeah, it's the flag mania after 9-11 was just like, man, 
they really sold a lot yeah. of those oh, things. That's crazy. And there's so many of them in the trash now. Well, so so Brian, you you weren't necessarily much of a church goer, right? Like in the evangelical uh, no, world. No, my my dad sort of like uh, says that we were religious, but I I've probably been to church like seven times okay. in my entire life. Oh, wow. So wow. we weren't. He's just lying. He wants to go to heaven. Oh yeah, <laughs> who doesn't? It is. Come on. Because growing Seven. up in a Southern Baptist church, we learned three pledges: mm. uh, one to the American flag, one to the Christian flag, and one to the Bible. Just the not even a flag at that point. You just Wait, pledge allegiance. How to does the that Bible. one go? Can you give me the pledge of allegiance to the Bible? Oh fuck! Uh, I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I think it's like may it be a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, and I will I don't know dwell in the house of the Brian's Lord. Brian's eyes are I'm rolling in. in the back of his head. <laughs> we, we we did this for something called RAs, Royal Ambassadors. So just I don't know. Fucking Google it. It's awful. Oh my god, but, uh, sounds terrible. But, but going, I went to a Christian school that was. It was not Baptist. It was Christian Reformed, made by all those bizarre Dutch people. But um, we did not say the pledge regularly mm. in school. Did either of you guys do that at all growing up? I don't oh, remember. Or, or you, Brian, did you do that growing up, say the pledge regularly <laughs> in school? Or did your class do it and you sat down? <laughs> <laughs> we did every day, but it is every funny. In like the too, fifth yeah. grade, in the fifth grade, me and this kid, this other bad kid, we're like, let's see how many days in a row we can just Hell, sit. Yes. Let's <laughs> fucking go, dude. Hell, Stand yes, up. Dude. And uh, like I don't remember to be the, dad. <laughs> the count, but we did end up getting That's in trouble awesome. for it. And they were like, you know, you can't. I'm pretty sure the count. You, you just stand up. Yeah. And I think they only the teacher only said just stand up because she knows how much of a hassle life is going to be for, for you sure. as the guy that sits down for the play. It's just yeah. one of those, like, mm. it, it's sort of back to the Dale Jacobs thing. It's like, you know, you have to help them learn their lesson. Yeah. Like I'm sure we did it on occasion, but yeah, it was not a daily. Mine was daily. Thing to do I it. said, uh, and to the Republic for Richard Stans yeah. uh, every single time. Was, Rich, was Richard Stans the guy? Uh, in the Animaniacs, they said, and to the Republic uh, for Richard Stans, they say, it. who's Richard Stans? And then a big muscular guy bursts through the door and says, I'm Richard Stans. Perfect. You got a problem with that? And he's like, no. Uh, and it was a real problem because I did the morning announcements at my school uh, and nobody <laughs> caught on <laughs> for six months that I was fucking up the pledge. <laughs> that rules. Uh, and then I finally, one of my history teachers came to me. He's like, you're saying Richard Stans, aren't you? I was like, yeah. He's like fucking knock it off. <laughs> well, I, what I want to do now is take us to the next Prager U Kids yeah. video. The we, most patriotic, like oh, we're, my, we're talking here about the, the flag, the most, you know, the most uh, the patriotic symbol of our land and, and who mm, stood for mm. that flag better? Oh, and, and and Ronald with, fucking Reagan, dude. And with the largest That's dick, right. the hottest, yep. thickest, juiciest dick than Ronald fucking Reagan himself. You know that Ronald Reagan was a complete median dick, right? Like, oh, there, yeah. There, no, there like, was no way, like he wasn't on either end he was right down the middle with that cock. So the first thing that I want to say is, um, Brian Quinby, uh, no thank you for sharing this with me. <laughs> you don't like Leo and Layla? Good. Leo so, and Layla's time Oh adventures? my God. So this is- a I had seen a few of these videos before because my favorite thing about Leo and Layla is that they go and they talk to like- Fucking Adam Smith, right? Or Alexander Solzhenitsyn. It's so weird. Some shit that no one fucking cares about. And this this uh, particular one, this Leo and Layla's history adventures, is a shoddily animated thing where they go it back in time, terrible. much like in the Imagination Station. This is basically the Imagination yeah. Station of the Prager U universe. But make it an app. What we what <laughs> happens here is that Leo and Layla, who are again our two protagonists, they're just two kids. They're just two kids who want to learn yeah. more about. America and uh, Leo is tearing down a fence for they some reason. Parents. Yeah, they have no parents. <laughs> well, they're um, going to be home soon because they do. Uh, he does have to rebuild the fence before and they get Leo, home. Leo's like just tearing down a fence. Yeah, Leo's like I'm Ronald Reagan and this is the Berlin Wall now for some reason. And I have a clip. So okay. they're talking about. So like, oh yeah, Reagan defeated the communists and he was also really good at other stuff. He played college football. He was also on the swim team. He ran track too. Plus he was student body president. <laughs> and he was totally handsome. Ugh. Ew. Gross. What the heck, Leo? What the heck indeed, Leo? That's the same, that's like just the same lady, right? Doing both voices. <laughs> <laughs> that is, I didn't notice it, but it probably was. But I'll say this. 
just a couple of fucking young kids just throwing <laughs> back and forth some Ronald Reagan <laughs> trivia, like as is wont as to you happen do, yeah. out there. Yeah. It's, it's one of the, actually the big problems with all the uh, Imagination <laughs> Station episodes of Adventures in Odyssey, too, which mm-hmm. is these kids seem to be having encyclopedic knowledge about the life of Ronald Reagan. Yes. And yet when they finally meet Reagan, he has no idea anything that Reagan did. Yes. Or why. Yes. Yeah. I, I noticed that as well. And it's... <sighs> The frustrating the thing is the history books, they always stop right at, you know, Ronald Reagan's uh, college endeavors. Right. Like student body president, Ronald Reagan. Anyway, yeah. that's the end of history class right. for the rest of right. your life. The straight I, I, up most frustrating thing about this is whoever they got to do the Ronald Reagan voice. Oh, God. Is oh, the worst he's voice so actor I've ever heard. Bad. In my terrible. World. No, not even close. And I only can do one voice and that's the murder Brian voice. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's, I a, think that's a better I, Reagan. You could have done like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, because, yeah. because if you did the uh, Ronald Reagan voice, you at least would have uh, a sense of like dynamics and yeah. tone and like being able to actually You're emphasize words. You're supposed to look yeah. into a fucking mirror. When you want to learn an impression, I've been told. Yeah. Uh, by Brett, who actually does do some pretty good impressions. Like, but he won't just do them on the show. Like, if he if he wants to do an impression of something, he will practice. Okay. The, oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing it in a mirror for, for weeks sure. at some points to like when we filmed the TV show to come up with voices mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. He would he would practice for a very long time. So it was just frustrating how low effort. Yes. Well, and, this and Ronald Reagan was absolutely. the thing in the voice acting world too is like you have a lot of voice actors uh, who are very good at impressions because that's going to be a lot of the work you get is like actually imitating an actor to like right. fill in a line in a trailer that wasn't recorded. Yeah, like right being a pickup guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, and we, we've I, talked I, about this before, where it's like, yeah, there are people who are just like, if you need Jason Statham's voice, you call one of these like five or six people, right? Who does like a hundred voices, one of which is Jason Statham. There, uh, that's also very true in the in terms of like children's animation <laughs> too. Like, um, mm-hmm. you know, I've had a lot of auditions for spin-offs of movies that turn into like franchises that sure. it's just like we want you to sound exactly like you know whoever it is in the movie like that, that it's it that's in very very much high actually the, the actor who plays christopher columbus in the up, upcoming odyssey episode we're going to talk about that's basically been his job the oh interesting is being sort of the second run of various disney characters but i mean i think it's pretty clear at this point why they wouldn't have paid for the guy who can actually do a ronald reagan which is that they'd have to pay for the guy who can do a ronald reagan <laughs> they sure didn't pay for the animation uh, i'll but tell you, you that know right what the, fuck the now. thing is this is capitalism and with capitalism people can pay a lot of money and make a lot of money and eat food that's unlike right communism, that's right brian unlike communism <laughs> which makes you starve yeah oh man all this talk about communists is making me hungry. Why? Well, here. Communism makes everyone hungry. <laughs> People living under communism are often poor and don't have enough money for food. Poor. That's why we have to stop it. Poor. Like, poor. He says poor. poor. He says poor. poor. He says <laughs> when he, you know, when he says the famous line, he says, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Like famously the one it's like it's like doing an imitation of of John F Kennedy and saying like mispronouncing Ish bin ein Berliner. Right. It's like yeah. we know everyone knows Ronald Reagan says Gorbachev. Mr. Gorbachev tear down this it's wall. It's the one thing and you can't even get that in your fucking impression. It's insane. And you know at this point uh, the reason that Reagan is even fucking talking to us in the first place, or more accurately talking to Leo, mm-hmm. is that <laughs> we have been teleported back to the actual Berlin Wall. And what's so interesting to me about this part is how it is utterly fucking inert. There is yeah. nothing happening. For they some reason, they didn't have yeah. the no. budget. They All that happens is that fucking Reagan stands there and gives facts. <laughs> and I say facts very like loosely. No one can even turn their head. They're all no. just facing the camera. Some of yeah. the facts that exist, for instance, and I don't know if, if you knew this. This was news to me, actually. Ooh, yeah, is yeah, that, is that there yeah. were no shooting or bombs during the Cold War, <laughs> which is probably news to the yeah. people of El Salvador. But I yeah. digress. <laughs> they couldn't even do the thing like the Flintstones where they have the back move. Yeah. You know, oh, like, yeah, so yeah. That they're yeah, like yeah. at least moving somewhat. No, they're yeah. standing nope. there. I'm really they sad. Don't move. I was really sad to see that one of the guards on the wall didn't take Leo out at any point. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been fun. This. 
That would have. That would have. If, if this yeah, was loved. an Adventures in Odyssey episode, uh, there would have been a oh city. Yeah, he would be escaping. They'd be jumping across the wall. Yep. Or they'd be going with that one guy who left East Germany in a hot air balloon. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, but also, Reagan uh, uh, tore it down himself. Yeah, he did he, he personally just did it right yeah. by himself. He just kind of flicked his head back, and the whole thing fell. Yeah, yeah, you uh, remember like, that, right, Brian? You, 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 I'm sure you were you were watching the TV at that time when <laughs> Ronald Reagan personally took down the Berlin Wall, right? Me and my friends were all outside yeah. doing. Ronald Reagan trivia. Yeah. And, and <laughs> rip out park fences. Was, yeah. My parents just fucking came out and they're like, Brian, get in here, get in here. You gotta There's see this. Ronald Reagan's doing something with a wall. And I was like, yeah, okay. I cool. was I was really surprised uh with how cool Reagan was with a time traveler appearing in front of him, but this yeah. was also, I guess, second term Reagan. Well, so like, yeah, he, he, he's not he, all there he was anymore. Like, he's not, yeah. The, well, when I was one of the funniest things, like Reagan grew up in a little like apartment over a shop. And one of the things people like to talk about is how when he was in the White House and on the second floor, he'd be like, I'm living over the shop again. And people were like, that was a funny quip of his. And I'm like, no, no he it thought wasn't. he was over the shop. Yeah. Guys. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> when that wall came down, it is an interesting piece of like, I don't know. Uh, political expediency that Reagan was like, get me on the fucking plane or, you know, Nancy was like, get this man on the fucking plane, right. change his diaper. We're going to get him on a podium and, and get this done because it's happening. The, the whole bizarre thing of the, the reunification of East and West Germany is that it just kind of happened. Right. Right. Because everyone w- was just sick of like having to maintain all of these sort of bizarre specific institutions right and then the west was able to co-opt it and so people wanted to tear down the wall and go visit their relatives again and then they're like by the way welcome back to to west germany it's the whole germany now and then of course (laughs) after that after that all happened there was immediately extreme austerity measures that were placed on east germany so that they could liberalize the economy and no one knew i mean really no one knew it was coming i one of my friends was was you know, her parents were in the military or her dad was in the military. So she was born in Berlin, mm. was like maybe six months old. And her mom was walking around and there was this huge crowd gathered. And she was like, why is everyone fucking out here right now? It's so hot. And she went home and then later found out that the wall was getting torn <laughs> down. Oh, shit. Well, I have a question for you all about a, a specific thing uh, that Reagan brings up here about Reaganomics. Mm. Um, I, I wrote this quote yes, down verbatim. I implemented Reaganomics, which made everyone's <laughs> lives better because they got textless. So, so here's the full I'm trying quote. Trying to do his Reagan impression and you not did mine. A good that job. was yeah, really good. good. Yeah, was good. Reagan. <laughs> I've been I've been trying to do the mental backflips it would take to make this make sense, but I want to see if anyone else can make sense of it. The exact quote is: um, "We cut taxes so that the government took less of people's hard-earned money away, and that led to more people getting jobs." <laughs> and I, yeah, yeah, that's how it works. How? Yep. How does that happen? AJ, have you ever heard of something called the fucking economy, bro? Come on. Well, here's the thing: this kid. <laughs> This little kid knew the exact day that Ronald Reagan died. But he doesn't know what the economy is? Get the fuck out of here. Or Reaganomics. Right. See, the motherfucker He's never heard the term. Know. Yeah. I, all right. Reaganomics? What's that? He's dude. Uh, well, he's the like, like the biggest Reagan fan that's ever existed. Yeah, he's like tearing down the Berlin Wall. And then when he gets to the actual Berlin Wall, he's like, what's this? A wall yeah. in Berlin? Like, <laughs> <laughs> wait, am I in Berlin and his sister's just lost? Yeah, she's like, yeah. oh, I love his sister just wandering what around. What was this? She was like trying to transport between different places. She was at the White House at one point. She was at a fucking like the Parthenon or something at one point. Yeah, she was. She was. She was in California. She was at. She was at the Reagan Ranch. Right. She starts at the Reagan Ranch, and then she goes to Washington. She's at the White House, yeah, yeah, and right. then goes to the Supreme Court. Oh, oh, was that where I she have, was? I have okay. the clip actually of what she did. Yeah. Oh, great. Well, I. Went Went to the White House and met Nancy Reagan, the first lady. Oh, God, and the I learned all about their program life. to keep kids off drugs. Just say no. <laughs> you got that right. Plus, I went to the Supreme Court and visited one of my role models, Justice Sandra Day O'Connor. Oh my God, oh my. Uh, They didn't even talk. She's just like, here's a thing that happened. Just say no. 
By the way, violent crime increased in the yeah, 80s by I, I would, an I would unimaginable love margin. To yeah. hear, Brian, your <laughs> thoughts on this part. This just say no, because this is what popped for me. Was where oh, it was yeah. like, wow, they're also thinking that they're also making the honest claim that the war on drugs worked and was good. And I was like, I'm sure Brian has thoughts on this. One, I hate the dishonesty of to keep kids off of drugs. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. it it really what it really was and they can't say this because they're freedom 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 right over there yeah they can't say nobody can do drugs yes yeah, like, yeah. It's a, it's yes. Like, we take away your personal responsibility yes. to do these things of course and we'll throw you in jail if you do it we also are the ones that believe in freedom too yep yeah <laughs> and, and, and this like, this stuff i don't think the I don't think the communists were much better to drug users, but uh, I don't fucking no, they, they weren't. Around <laughs> saying it. This, yeah. this yeah. dovetails really nicely, though, with something that we talked about a while back with uh, Stefan Borsensula when we talked about Reefer Madness, where yeah. it's just about how the history of criminalization is not at all about making people's lives safer or better. It is about making it so that certain groups of people are easier to prosecute. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's the whole yeah. fucking thing. That's why weed is the, the reason weed was so, it was so rough for them to let it be legalized and they fought so fucking hard is because the other drugs are harder to find in a car. Weed yeah. gives you fucking probable cause right. to search a car because yep, right, right, it's right. the stinkiest shit smell in the right. world if you got the right stuff, yep, you know? Yep, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and to be clear but to our I'm, listeners, we do. We do have the right stuff. <laughs> well, I, you know, it, the shittiest thing is in Ohio, I'm going to get busted for weed eventually because mm -hmm. I just keep it with me in the car. And uh, I have a medical card, but you have to put it in your trunk like it's dynamite <laughs> <laughs> if you buy like, it. I just am not doing that. It's Hold on, let me drop, drop my fucking Ziploc bag of weed in the trunk first. What have we learned? I don't know that I fucking want to kill myself. Let's move on to Columbus <laughs> the Grand Voyage, which is our second episode of Adventures in Odyssey that we're going to be talking about. And this episode actually starts in media res. Yeah, um, this which is, is interesting. This is, they're really, this isn't even a Paul McCusker episode. You'd think that with this level of sophistication, yeah. That it would be our, our guy Paul, but this is a Phil Lawler episode, and they don't they don't have the little intro where mm -hmm. oh, what's this kid's name? It's not Nicholas. Lawrence. It's Lawrence. Lawrence Hodges. Oh, Lawrence. Interesting <laughs> recurring character. Uh, his mom is a school teacher. Uh, he's played by Gabriel Encarnacion, and he is I don't know. He's just some fucking kid for the most part. He's just a dorky kid. I guess that's more his like his vibe. Sure. Yeah. But instead of having an opening here where he's like, "Boy, Columbus Day is coming up." People sure have a lot of opinions on Columbus. And then Wit's like, well, let me tell you the right opinions <laughs> yeah, on Columbus. Yeah. Jump in the big metal box right now. Get and then the you have box, him scream Lawrence. while his his flesh is flayed along with his mind. No, he's just in a monastery in Spain. Yep. It's interesting this episode opened with uh, contemporary Catholic pop. I was actually very, yeah. I was very thrilled to hear <laughs> yeah. Michael yeah. chanting. Yeah. I noticed that too. <laughs> so, yeah, we're at, a, we're at a Spanish monastery, mm -hmm. which is... Uh, Probably the worst place that you want to be if you're a small child. Yeah, not great. And, uh, not, great. Not, not great, Bob. No. Wait a minute. This can't be right. This is a monastery. Yes, it is. Now be quiet. But you don't understand. I'm not supposed to be here. Mm. And is that why you were hiding in the closet? You'll not get out of your work that uh -oh. way, I can assure you. So r right off the bat, this kid is like being threatened with violence, which is yes. told he's going to be beaten. I have never heard so much adult on kid violence <laughs> in something. I'm glad yeah. that you pointed that out, Brian, because it, this is something that I guess you, you wouldn't know, having not listened to hundreds and hundreds of episodes of this fucking show like me. The threat of violence to these children in the Imagination Station is the one constant across yeah. the board. No matter what, when a kid hops into the fucking Imagination Station, they are immediately going to find themselves in mortal peril. Yeah, they yeah. are they are dropped into the worst social position that they could be occupying and someone's going to try to kill them. Yes. Somebody wants to beat you. I'm a Hey, look, a kid, let's beat you. <laughs> <It's laughs> the craziest shit I've ever heard. Like they, they, this is something that parents would make their kid not even like let their kid listen to but make this is yeah. like the place I I I did a a, a episode of Holy Boys that will already be out when this comes yeah, out yeah. Uh, about a, a, a group called uh, uh, Teen Mania. Oh, God. Oh, my God. No. You guys have ever Ron heard of Teen Loose, Mania? Baby. Oh, yeah. I have not. Ron Loose. I've met the founders, Brian. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> they do a boot camp. Yep. 
thing. Yep. Yeah. That is really a, like the Navy SEALs. Yeah, it's shit. an honest to goodness yeah. boot camp. Jesus. So I play, I play audio of this where somebody was filming it mm -hmm. and they knew that somebody was filming it. This was done for an infomercial sort of thing. Yeah. It was like, look at how cool this is. Right. Look at how this and is they, good for your kid. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And they are making kids eat cat food mm -hmm. and then roll down a hill. Yep. And if they throw up, they have to eat the barf. Why? And what? It was the crap well, to, for Jesus. Yeah, for Jesus. Really, yeah. Mainly just for Jesus <laughs> yeah. reasons. They didn't really <laughs> make you tough. Yeah, it makes you tough. It's Jesus good, clean, listen, why you'd have a natural human reaction to eating cat food and rolling <laughs> down a hill? <laughs> yeah, it was. The, I'm some, just telling you craziest that it's that, one of the craziest things i've ever a, found that's such a go-to with like youth group mm -hmm. or like short-term mission trip thing is like make kids eat gross stuff. well because it's also partially this idea of like christ suffered therefore we must suffer too in reality yeah. it's just a huge kink thing like it's they're yeah, definitely yeah, getting off on this shit it's not explicitly sexual which then makes it you know right. and there's no swearing involved so it's just stuff like eating a uh, Chocolate covered onion. That's one I had to do myself yeah. on a world tra changers trip. But uh, <laughs> how was it? Eating barf is that's listen, fucking yeah, that's, wild. that's evil. <laughs> I do a series every year called Shocktober that yeah. maybe some of you have have heard of, and eating puke is like a, a shock jock thing yes. not a christian yes. thing yeah. i did not think i was gonna run into the eating puke <laughs> on my christian series <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah so not only does he get threatened with being hit which of course like yeah james dobson produced this um he also gets hit what yeah. is your name boy lawrence hodges who are you well, boom! Ow. Just <laughs> fucking okay. Here we go. Yes. It was kind of a rude way to say it, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a, he he dared to discipline in that moment. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he sure did. He sure did. Um, and I think it was pointed out earlier by by one of the friars or whatever that uh, Catholics hate imagination because he mentions like the imagination. Says, imagination. Mm -hmm. You can't have imagination within the Catholic Church. Smack, smack, smack. Um, <laughs> and in my experience, it's pretty true, actually. So yeah. Well, Queen Isabella, on the other hand, is a little bit more rational and reasonable. Yeah. She decides to appoint Lawrence as a royal messenger, and uh, you know sure. he's gonna yeah. he's gonna have a great time out there. So Lawrence heads and goes off to meet fucking Christopher Columbus. Yeah. So so when we heard Earl Bowen just there, he was playing another villain. Uh, Don Rodrigo de la Vega, who in the history of Spain and Columbus uh, didn't exist. Uh, that is the name of Zorro. Fun fact. Uh, <laughs> Holy just shit. That's right. Made that I guy knew that up. one sounded familiar. That's great. That's great. So, yeah, Isab Isabella has sent him to go after uh, Christopher Columbus. Uh, Isabella in this is played by Carol Bilger, who is also the voice of Mary Barkley most of the time. Lawrence goes and meets Christopher Columbus. Yep. R real name Columbus Cristobal. was on his way to, to France, yes. and then they're like, nah, come back. And he he speaks in front of Isabella and Ferdinand, and Ferdinand is, of course, once again, our good friend Corey Burton. Yep. Columbus is Brian Cummings, who played the stove in Beauty and the Beast. Oh, or oh. Sokolov in Metal Gear Solid 3 oh, or the sculptor in Sekiro. Yes. Hell uh, he, yeah. I, I just wanted to bring this one thing on uh, up because Brian Cummings is one of the very first video game voice actors. He was in Tron Solar Sailor for the Intellivision Intellivoice like add-on that actually had vocal recordings where he played the MCP. And actually, Corey Burton was also in that game as Tron. Huh. Is he related uh, to Jim Cummings? Because He is not related to Jim Cummings, although he was in the sequel to the California Raisins movie with Jim Cummings. That oh, is wow. some real the trivia. Sell out. There yeah. was cum all over that movie. <laughs> I need to see the raisins sell out, right? <laughs> That's actually. I'm thinking. I am considering doing a series about reboots and really rough sequels. Oh hell yeah! It is. Hell I yeah. got to thinking about Point Break. There, they did oh, a yeah. remake of yeah, Point yeah. Break. They did a remake of uh, what's the other ones? They did Total Recall mm -hmm. and Robocop oh, and yeah. stuff like that. And yeah. there's something and real Dredd fun too. Yeah, but that one's good. Oh, is Dread it? is actually yeah, Dread, good. Dread's really oh, good. Oh, Dread. Yeah. Huh. Dread, Dread fucking whips It's ass, also a great man. pinball it's machine. So I was thinking about doing a series like that, and I do have an old series called the M Street Fight Reviews, the MCU. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Mm. And then in parentheses, it's movies, cinematic universe. <laughs> just, like, just like movies in general? 
the movie movie. The movie movie. So we did not another okay. teenage yeah. movie. Okay. We did oh, scary okay. movie. Epic movie. Yeah. We yeah, did yeah, disaster yeah. movie. Oh, epic God. movie. Oh, those Super really dropped movie. off. Those got yeah. real bad. There's like three left, I think, that we haven't done. I'm like, how do I bring this concept back? I'm I'm kind of out of movies, mm -hmm. pretty much. There's only so many Friedberg and Seltzer, which is what we were really looking right. at. Yeah. Right, yeah. The guys that wrote it. We were trying to see what they were like. And uh, they are bad. They're very homophobic. <laughs> what? No and way. Several wow. other things. Yeah. But now you, you telling me that there is a California Raisins <laughs> movie I universe see, yeah. now has me excited. I mean, a fun fact, that, that Raisins sequel is the way I discovered masturbation. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that this children's show about the journey of Columbus, this epic yeah, yeah. travel across the ocean, right? Like all I We're think it's so the whole time. So yeah. ripe for for like adventures. We're dealing with like the business side. Yeah. <laughs> Of things that he's yeah. aiming for 10% of all things in it's the new world. so dumb. And there's this whole thing with like Don Rodrigo. Yeah, so so he makes this this reasonable request with if Ferdinand. If the crown were to fund your voyage, what would you want in return? Majesties, I pray your indulgence. Should I succeed in this quest, I desire to be made Admiral of the Ocean Sea, as well as the Governor and Viceroy of all the lands I might discover. These titles shall be passed on to my sons, and I and my heirs shall receive 10% of all wealth discovered on those lands. This is outrageous. What do you think you are, you foreigner, to come here and make such demands on this crown? Ah, I, I was led to believe that this would be agreeable. Agreeable? Isabella, do you now see this man for what he truly is? Colon, how could you let greed poison your soul this way? Majesty... I feel my requests are fair and equitable under these circumstances. We will decide what is fair and equitable. I love that Carol Bilger is just like, I'm not doing an accent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's like, no, I'm, yeah, yeah, no. I mean, they're, those are cancelable accents. They they are. Are. I truly yeah. feel. It feels like an <laughs> equitable. It feels like a community theater production of Man of La Mancha. <laughs> <laughs> Mamma mia, you ask him for that much. So then it yeah, it turns out that like, you know, Lawrence ends up going to going to bat for Columbus. Columbus, wait! You can't oh turn my him God. down, Majesties. Lawrence. Quiet boy, or I'll have you flogged. Again! <laughs> Let's go! Again with the Let's Let's fucking Beat go. Beat that kid. Beat that kid. <laughs> That's a good sound clip, though. If, if you yeah. really, I'm actually, I'm actually really impressed that this was an Imagination Station episode where a dungeon was threatened, but no one was ever thrown into a dungeon. Well, that's because they have a slave ship this yeah. time. Hey. So, and Lawrence ends up getting enslaved. There's a really great moment where Lawrence asks what a cabin boy does, and he just yeah. laughs extremely menacingly. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's a little I, later because first he tries this to be sold as a slave. First, right. where Don Rodriguez, where Zorro tells him, "Oh, actually, I'm not a Spaniard. I want Columbus right where he is, France." You mean you planned this whole thing? Why yes. But but what happened to all that junk about true Spaniards helping Columbus? True Spaniards should want to help Columbus. But I am not a Spaniard. But I'm a fake Spaniard, <laughs> bitch. I am the loyal subject of King John II of Portugal. And you know what? I've been getting bored with the anti-Italian stuff lately. I think I'm going to go on an anti-Portuguese. It's a good idea. Next. It's a good idea. Um, it's mm -hmm. it's just like it's the niche that we need to fill. It's you yeah. Know, it's still I mean, who it's, not, it's a type of Dago, but still, you know, who who suggests a pink map at the Berlin Conference of 1884? <laughs> am I right? Am I right? Fuck you, Portugal. <laughs> like deep, that was ever going to work in the Congo? Yeah, come on. Oh, and I also have the slave ship clip, so might but as don't well. Worry. Uh, Captain Munoz informs me you'll bring a handsome price. Price? Oh, didn't I tell you? The Constance is a slave ship. Slave? Oh, oh damn it. Captain Munoz <laughs> hate to see it. peace and quiet on this trip, so I'm afraid I'll have to gag you again. Okay, no, this is... Go. This Please is just crossing a line. This, yeah, this, this is, is going really... someplace real bad. So this this yeah. kid, who again like experiences everything in real time, is then just under a boat until he gets to the Canary for Islands we, or whatever. Well, it, yeah, he gets to Canary Islands, like, right, and then he's on the next boat for a month. Columbus yeah. ends up buying him. I mean, I don't know how time <laughs> dilation in the Imagination Station works, but it must be something so, else. Again, this is all fake. Columbus was never swindled by a Portuguese. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> no matter how slimy or conniving their people may be, um, we Columbus can't lose is- Portugal. <laughs> <laughs> We're oh, almost we out of countries can. in Europe. So ultimately, <laughs> what ends up happening is that Lawrence does go along with Columbus. Columbus discovers the new world, and it's like land yeah, ho. We get, a, we get a ship montage, and then we get a second ship montage. And, and, and ultimately, then there's a brief mutiny. There's a threat yeah, of a mutiny at one point. These guys are like, we're going to mutiny, and they're like, no, we're actually just going to talk we're, about it. It's actually going to be chill. Uh, <laughs> like some plot happens, but ultimately, where this ends up landing literally, is San yeah. Salvador. And where it lands metaphorically is... Uh, Praise God for rewarding <laughs> us after so long a journey. For his sake, I give this land the name of the Savior, San Salvador. Those synthesizers are so king loud. And queen of They're Castile. going nuts. I take possession of these lands and dominions for Spain. And the glory of God. So Lawrence gets out and he talks to Wit. I don't know why my teacher said some people don't like Columbus. I thought he was cool. Well, he has been the center of controversy, but whatever you may think, one fact is undeniable. Columbus he was a, killed a lot of people. brave adventurer and explorer, and his voyage across the Atlantic ranks as one of the great feats of history. Yeah. Are we still set up for the Columbus adventure? Yes, why? Because I'm going to go again. See ya. I like Lawrence? getting hit. La- oh, Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to enslave you Chris again. Sums up. We owe a lot to Christopher Columbus. Our whole history is a matter of fact. And yep. whatever else he may have done during and after his voyages, <laughs> good or bad, one of his greatest Whoa. accomplishments was to make it possible for the gospel to be spread around the world. So I wonder, I bet you're wondering why Chris would say something like yeah, that. Yeah, why? You know, I, I wonder why Chris would say something like that in an episode where we just had a child go into slavery, which is a bad thing, right? Only the villainous Portuguese would ever do something like That's that. That's exactly right, Brian. Mm-hmm. Um, so Columbus, I don't think I have to c- explain anything about Columbus, <laughs> right? He was not only bad, he was so bad the Spaniards started getting like, hey, you're starting to cut off the noses and ears right. of guys who are also Spanish, and we don't want you to do that anymore, and he just kept doing it. I mean, literally cut off people's noses and ears. Yeah. Imagine being that guy. Like, that's not a normal dude. Was he switching him around? (laughs) (laughs) He didn't want to do it. (laughs) He had to. Come on. He had to. He's a man of God, and and so this episode came out just two weeks after Columbus Day, 1992, right? 1992, a very important year. It's the 500th Mm. anniversary of Columbus sailing the ocean blue. And there were some big plans in place. We got a commemorative dollar coin. Uh, The Pope came to the Caribbean, uh, the Spanish World's Fair, and Ameriflora. 92? Oh, yeah. There we I go. I know Ameriflora 92, <laughs> baby. I never went, but I do know it. Ameriflora was a Columbus, Ohio event that oh, was like cool. the first oh, international, like, floral exposition in the United States. And I think also the last because it was a fucking catastrophe. Huh. It was also kind of a dud. Yeah, I, I know mm. that my parents wouldn't take us because I guess they had read, <laughs> just sucked. read reviews or something. Yeah, oh. I think it just like, I think it's like one of those things where when you go to, especially when you have teenagers, yeah. you go to a place like that and you're like, it's just fucking flowers. <laughs> yeah. That's all it is, it's just fucking flowers. Because there was a thing here that came through and I think this was more of a, a national thing or mm. international called Son of Heaven. That's that yeah, was really a big deal here too. And son like of heaven, everybody was talking. Lost about. a bunch of money, and it yeah. was like a, it was a big debacle. And part of the whole thing with Ameriflora was they got their money up front from the government, but it was way <laughs> more expensive. But like the big yes. the debacle with with the son of heaven was that they got the money afterwards. They like lost mm. money, and they're like, hey, can we get that back? Well, and also, I mean, this was Cleveland, but they had also had that like balloon releasing thing. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. The, I know about the balloon. Yeah. Yeah. So many balloons they all fell that, into like, Lake Erie. Yeah. So Ohio was doing real great for like this ten year span yeah. of just absolutely catastrophic citywide events. I mean, look, as, as 
as a as a metropolitan a area, born and raised Michigander, like, do I feel some sense of superiority over Ohio for this period of time? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I just I sort of find it amazing that we get thrown in there with Florida, like now, right. like mm-hmm. it wasn't already known. <laughs> this is an insane place. Yeah, like in the nineties when I was doing drugs when I was twelve years old. <laughs> You fucking I, every time I tell somebody the first time I did acid was when I was 12. That's Jesus like an Ohio Christ. thing. Amazing. Was it a day of the balloon festival? <laughs> <laughs> it was a random day because all of our parents were at school and my friend's 16 year old sister was like, hey, I can get y'all oh, some that's LSD. that's amazing. And we were like, oh, I don't even wow. know what that is, but sure. And she's like, just eat this piece of paper. I had one of the best days of my wow. life up to that point. <laughs> oh, wow. So of course there were counter plans to this 500th anniversary of Columbus's first voyage. Uh, <laughs> Uh, a group called the Indian Indigenous Survival Summit happened in 1991 in Los Angeles, and that included representatives from tribes all over North America, including like Mexico. And they started to organize against what was going to be the 1992 Columbus Day festivities mm. in Denver. A protest actually got the Columbus Day parade canceled, as well as in Washington, D.C., completely wiped off, didn't end up happening because of the counter-protesting. And uh, in 1991, they had gotten South Dakota to declare Indigenous Peoples Day on the same day. And in 92, Berkeley, California did the same thing. In in Columbus, Ohio as well, they also made a replica of the Santa Maria on the, uh, how do you say this, Scioto? The Scioto River. I used to walk by it every day. It is a river that sm- I walk by it every day still. And when it gets really hot outside, it smells like mayonnaise. <laughs> and also people paddle board in it and stuff. Oh. And it, it's, you are allowed to do it. You are mm-hmm. allowed to paddle board and mm-hmm. kayak on it, but you are not to touch the water <laughs> with your skin. Huh. It, there are signs that everywhere. Seems that seems really say a it. dangerous game to be paddle boarding in those yeah. conditions. Yeah. Exactly. (laughs) So the Ohio Indian Movement and the Ohio Council of Native American Burial Rights led a memorial in the park and a protest march. San Francisco also did this like I don't think they built any replicas, but they also were going to do this recreation of Columbus landing on American soil. I know. I know. So a bunch of people went out. They had five sailboats. I don't know why it was five instead of three, but who knows? Um, and protesters ended up anchoring them. So Hell they weren't yeah. able to, cool. to, and they to also, get into port. It was five instead of three because yeah. not everybody gets to be put on the list. You know? <laughs> so they had to mm-hmm. add more lines to the list. That's awesome. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like the blue lives matter flag, just adding more and more stripes. For yeah. Another. And, and so this, this kept going on up and down uh, the American continents, uh, 500 years of resistance brought 20,000 marchers to Mexico city. Wow. Um, Fucking revolutionaries hell. in Peru, uh, communist Marxist Leninist groups, uh, led some actions. There were some Mormon churches that were burned down in Chile. Um, of course there was big stuff happening in Colombia. The CIA put out a threat advisory to all their embassies. It was a big deal. And of course it made the news and that's why Focus on the family scrambled to make sure. this episode like, sure. why is everyone calling Christopher Columbus a bad guy? Right. He's just a good little Italian right, boy, right, like right. a Super Mario, and he loves a God, the, 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 the Jesus. We, we, will not, we will not get to the Super Mario impression until the Prager U video. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, uh, we're going to have a link to the playlist in the description, so just go and watch this real quick, because we're going to have to run through it quickly. Yeah. This Michael is, Knowles, yeah. dead-eyed Michael good Knowles, Lord, reads man. a children's book. It's wild. But so, also set your pr- browser to private, because you do not want this fucking with your algorithm oh on YouTube. You certainly oh. don't. This is Otto's so Tales. Him. It's a sil- it's a series <laughs> of paperback books for children. The man who is welcoming us is definitely not a reptile, guys. He's definitely Starring not. Oh a God. young Dennis Prager and his <sighs> pet dog. Just a and mess. they talk to this is a Christopher Columbus. Mess. And I, he says, I'm a Christopher. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> Nice to me. Oh, no. well, oh. and, you know, it's it is it is funny, but I will never critique any of my accent work again after watching <laughs> this. That this is acceptable. Yeah. Um, the man has the dead eyes of Christopher Columbus uh, taking off somebody's nose and switching it around with somebody's ear. Like mm-hmm. it is it is a deeply unsettling video that also I didn't realize was in rhymed verse until yeah. maybe three minutes in. Same. Yeah. Verse is generous because there are rhyming words, but there is no meter. I actually wanted to add this to the playlist to pair it with the Odyssey episode, but Brian, I'm curious yeah. to hear, because had you seen this one before I recommended that it go on the playlist or not? Um, No, okay. I don't think I had 
I had I had watched this one yet. Maybe I did. This one is so did it, cool. I don't did it remember. tickle your fancy? I like the <laughs> accent. Okay. I got. I mean, the accent just made I'm me so happy. <laughs> I'm, Whoa. I'm a Christopher. <laughs> and like the Prager U version is so. I mean, the the voices, because like I'm listening to these other ones, these adventures yeah. and Odyssey, yeah. and yeah. these are professionals. Yeah. I can tell. Yeah. 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 These people. Oh. This is like me. Yeah. Okay. People <laughs> no, you would be videos. better than this, Brian. Like you yeah. would. Maybe. No, for sure. People, people have made videos using clips from the show. Mm-hmm. Like made animations using clips from the show of things that I've done and said uh-huh. in the past. And huh. like uh this is like it's that level. Yeah. Of, yeah. of production where it's like somebody found the audio and then put video to it. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, I didn't know that the main character was Otto was De- uh, Prager, Dennis Prager, which is, that's a sicko fucking way. Well, Otto is the dog, oh, is the dog of yeah. Dennis Prager. So oh, okay. that's who's speaking in the first person. But then, yeah, the kid, the kid is, I didn't realize it until I watched it three times. Wow. And he was like, Otto Ryan. and his, well, just over, not at once. Ryan. I was grabbing clips. I do this for you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank we you. appreciate you. And it's like, and his friend Dennis, and I'm like That's halfway sicko. through the third time, I'm like, oh my Unreal. fucking god, it's a child, Dennis. This is what they're selling to children. And the the way that this unfolds is more or less what you would expect, right? They get on the boat, they go across. The thing that I really just wanted to point up here, though, the big difference between this and the Odyssey episode is that in the Prager You Kids version, it says that when Columbus landed, but this was not India. This was a different place, and there were natives here who were of a different race. The settlers and natives <laughs> got along quite a lot. Quite a lot! They also had trouble with each other, and sometimes they fought. Mm. Oh. Everything was fine. <laughs> cool. Sometimes it wasn't. Anyway. FDR? Ears and noses! Uh. Mommy, Daddy, can we watch one more Dennis Prager <laughs> video? But that's the nightmare, right? That's the waking yeah. nightmare here. Because ultimately where this goes after this is that they meet Roosevelt, he declares Columbus Day, and we're done. And there's this weird, like, this was a this was great. Not only they because of this. They away from FDR real quick, too. They abandon the rhyme scheme yeah. and just have this little bit at the end. His hard work and perseverance paid off. Uh, even though he never discovered a faster route to India like he wanted. But he found something even better, I barked. Is that why we celebrate Columbus Day? Dennis explained. We honor Columbus for his courage, for being the first person to connect the new world to the old world of Europe, and for making America possible. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be here, I said. Okay. Well, I don't fucking care. <laughs> We'd be somewhere else. Where did the rhyme I, like, go? I couldn't care. Yeah. yeah I could not care uh, at all. <laughs> I, I like really am now thinking about like a mom. Yeah. Like catching their kid, <laughs> like watching, uh, like a parent catching no their iPad. kid, like watching <laughs> what kids watch on YouTube, which is generally just people playing with toys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just being like, stop watching this garbage. I got a cartoon it, for you over yes, here. Yes, <laughs> yes. And I think that is ultimately like when we pull this all together, whether we're talking about Adventures and Odyssey, Prager You Kids or anything in between, mm. that is the project. The fundamental project is that you put something out that plays all the right notes for the adults because it's not really aimed at kids, right? It's aimed at the grown-ups and it's aimed at the grown-ups in a way that they will be then coaxed into giving this to their children so that they absorb the propaganda instead. And Brian, I'd be curious to hear, you know, now that we've spent uh, a good amount of time together, again, thank you so much for coming on the show and talking to us about this. First of all, do you have any like closing thoughts about any of this shit? As a person who collects in my brain bad content, mm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I find this stuff to be maybe a bit more objectionable than some of the other stuff I watch. But I also, this doesn't seem like something that will take just mm. from my, uh, you know, the people in my family and, and, or the people around me, like, just yeah. from my experience with sure. the kids around me and stuff like that, it's yeah. like, this stuff is kind of a fool's mm-hmm. errand, you know? First of all, they're going to teach you the dumbest version of history at school, you know? Yeah. And, like, you're going to learn that, and that's going to be, like, what your understanding of history is and ca- unless you move up and, and like, kind of, you know, do your own research, as they right. say. Mm-hmm. This is very unnecessary stuff. 
to make because yeah. no kid is going to choose to watch something with Ronald fucking Reagan. <laughs> no. And then my closing <laughs> thought has to be what age are these things for? Mm -hmm. I mean, that is yeah. the, the biggest yeah. question is what age cohort is this actually done for? Because some of this stuff sounds like it's aimed at fucking six year olds. Yeah. And some of it sounds like it's aimed at 17 year olds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And all of it is done in the six year old style. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So who the fuck would ever like, how would this ever yeah. like work out? Like I said, if you had fucking set me in front of a video when I was eight and I was playing with my <laughs> E-Man toys, yeah. if you had sat me in front of a computer and said, Hey, watch this thing about what? Ronald Reagan. Watch Chuck I Colson. would talk about <laughs> his good friend, Ronnie Reagan. Yeah. yeah. Or how to get a job. Yeah, fuck that. Yeah, watch fuck this that. thing about how to get a job. I'd be like, what? No, Scooby-Doo, uh. man. <laughs> Come on. So what is the age group well, is really because this that's, is, that's what's funny about this. That's the I think real is key that, to so much of this stuff is like they don't even need a real market. No, because that's right. not no. how they work. No. They yeah. don't give you a product and get money from that product and then use that money to fund the rest of the product like a normal business. This money is just getting handed to them and they're bleeding it out however they can yep. just in the, the, the name of continuing to make content. Well, and that's the and how, fascinating thing I think about the end of that video of about Christopher Columbus with Prager U is that they yeah. ask for donations yeah. for as much yeah. as they fucking yeah. rail against PBS. Right. Right. Not, not just buy the book, but like give us your money, just give us money. Yeah. They do have to say, uh, oh, this only continues with support from donors like you, as opposed to viewers like you, which is very, <laughs> and again, very it's like, who is this for? It's not donors. It's not, donors like these children who the fuck yeah. is supposed to be watching this thing I, I it's it's like i think the goal with this in the ultimate end is that there are gonna be dipshit teachers all around the country <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> that are going to maybe show these kids something on here not the columbus one i, I don't think no, anybody's yeah, stupid yeah. enough to play that columbus yes. thing in a school mm -hmm. no it's more but, the regular prager you stuff yep. yeah, yeah that 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 a teacher will show their class a story about, I don't know, a fun story about the flag so they can teach them how to dispose of a flag so yeah. that they can get that yeah. question right on a social yeah. studies yeah. test. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And like, I think that and homeschool kids, yep. I think mm -hmm. I definitely oh, think yeah. this is maybe for homeschool kids and like, it's really about trying to just peel off a small amount of people who are going to see this thing and then saying like, all right, well, you know, we got three kids in that class and you know how Republicans win elections, you know, mm -hmm. they don't, they don't want everybody. Right. They just want enough people to win. Yeah, elections. Yeah, right. Brian, was there anything that you wanted to plug or pitch or anything like that before we're done here? The thing I do that I'm very proud of is the street fight radio, Patreon It's yes. patreon.com yep. slash street fight radio. Uh, it is a kind of not the same. It's very different from the show. It is kind of my personal vanity <laughs> project <laughs> where oh, yeah. I just do new shows uh, every five, six, seven weeks, I do a new, a brand new series. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have covered everything from, again, shock, shock jocks. Shocktober is the most popular one. But I've also done uh, sports talk radio. And that one was very fun. Found the most disgusting human being I've ever heard <laughs> in my life in uh Colin Cowherd. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and just like I've done, I did a series about kid rock. I did a series about, uh, I did a lot of series about yeah. all kinds of different things and I'm real proud of that thing. So That's if you go to patreon.com slash street fight radio, I think there's a little something for everybody who likes freaks. Also, Heat O'Brien. Like that's that's important. Uh, that's <laughs> that is that is a uh that that is the show that I'm always like, you know, why did that one hit? Because nah. <laughs> that's one of the shows that people love. Well, I think it's because you tap like, into stuff like real sex, where everyone's like, oh, I have this vague memory of something that that but it's like a really important memory because it was yeah. like the first time they may have seen like a pair of tits and it was just like somebody doing like latex vacuum shit. Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. There's there's also just you hear a like uh, a a total 
fucking weirdos like sex yeah life like it's not something i talk about on street fight very much yeah. so right. i was very open behind the patreon wall to talk about you know things i think and stuff like that and it turns out i'm a freak you know? <laughs> i'm like that's right very weird i have very weird you know obviously i i uh don't sleep naked ever uh i sometimes will lay in bed in shoes <laughs> like just to have the maximum amount of clothes on. Wow. Also for a quick getaway, you, know? you could just leap right out of bed. There you go. Yeah, and I also don't I I I'll just tell you there's a story in it where I talk about the one sexual adventure I had was in a pool. <laughs> And uh, I was doing you and AJ uh, cargo shorts. We uh, sure do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, I had, you know, we had, me and my wife had wanted to try it. And we were like, fuck it, let's just do it. And uh, all I remember was being humiliated because <laughs> my cargo shorts were floating next to me. <laughs> Like they That's floated incredible. up to the water next to me, Holy and I felt shit. so embarrassed oh my God. about it. Well, I think, <laughs> but I think yeah. Brian, like the thing that I really like about the stuff that you do is I feel like you are able to tap into the idiosyncrasies of like the way that people communicate in a way that's mm. so interesting and like yeah, what yeah. people think they're talking about versus what they're actually talking about <laughs> would definitely recommend anybody to go, you know, check out uh, Street Fight on Patreon. We'll put a link as well in the show notes. Um, and, and thank you so much for your time. I think yeah. the thing that I want to say to wrap up here is one of the things that we say so often on this show as a joke is who is this for? Uh, when we all have our own little bits that we love, but you know what? When you come across a t-shirt, baby, when you come across something really fucking weird, like Prager, you kids, honestly Mm. ask yourself, who is this for? And that's how you're going to get just a little bit closer to understanding it. I'm the worst of all possible Josh's. I'm the worst of all possible AJ's. And I'm the worst of all possible Brian's. So many possible worlds, but we got this one. all right folks it's just you and me again check out brian's show street fight both the main podcast and the patreon it's all so good brian's a sweetheart he's been doing this for a very long time and you can tell he's just so goddamn charming if you're interested in coming to see us at the new york city pinball championships of course check out the patreon and make sure if you are a patron that you can use that discount code for the day that we are there. And speaking of patrons, we would not still be doing this if it wasn't for our patrons over at patreon.com slash worst of all. And we are so grateful for our newcomers who include Josiah Sutton, Josh Lutz, Ben Schrager, Chuck, Leon Thotsky, Victoria Vanderclote, Rebecca Herring, Chad Denton, Alma Sora, Izzy Benitez, Kirby P, Neil Richman, Lee Tron, G. Rivet, David Ada Ago, and Dan Chukra. And of course, a very special thank you to our $10 patrons, who are Silverbear909, Ashley Stoneman, Alexa Valentine, John John Johnson, Katie Wall, Nathan Woods, Samuel E. McConnell, Hannah White, Timmy Sexton, Tony Diddy, Annette Alford, I Hate Brian Alflord, Dara Swisher, Diana Berge, Glug Bungleberg, Post Hole Malone, Nikola Donov, and Rosie Armstrong. See you next time. <laughs>